brought Miami back from a 28-0 deficit, then led a game-winning drive, which resulted in Andy Crossland's 30-yard field goal with three seconds left on the clock. It gave the Hurricanes an improbable 31-28 victory and even their record at 3-3. Three three. Well, the West Virginia Mountaineers, well, they've always given Miami a tough time. Last year at Morgantown, Mulk Bolger shredded the Hurricanes' pass defense, though the Canes won it by three. It's Miami and West Virginia today on Sports Channel. Miami, Florida Sports Channel presents Miami Hurricane Football. Today it's a Big East clash as the Hurricanes host the Mountaineers of West Virginia. Hi everybody, I'm Frank Fort with my partner John Congemi back here at the Orange Bowl where Miami hasn't played a home game in just about a month. Good to be back home, but John, the Hurricanes come in with some concerns, specifically the health of quarterback Kenny Kelly, who led that great comeback last week at Boston College, but turned an ankle in the process, and up to this moment, we still don't know if he's going to be able to play. Yeah, the greatest fear for this Miami offense and Butch Davis's team is the play at quarterback and the health of the quarterback, Kenny Kelly. It will be a game-time decision, but Kenny Kelly has set it on fire the last two weeks, 47 of 77 for 588 yards, six touchdowns to only one interception. Last week, he was 20 of 36 for 218 yards. He does a great job, and Ken Dorsey's the freshman. He's only shown, had limited time against FAMU. You see four of 12 for 44 yards and a touchdown, but it's Kenny Kelly's experience on the outside as well as in the pocket the last couple of weeks that has really paid dividends for this Hurricane offense. They desperately need him at quarterback. And Miami has not started a true freshman at quarterback since the 1970s. Well, whoever quarterbacks, they're going to be comforted to know they have one of the best tight ends in the country in Bubba Franks, who is much more involved in the offense this year than he was last year. Yeah, big tight end, 6'6", 260 pounds. You see last week, six receptions for 78 yards. Of course, that one big touchdown that tied the football game. Bubba's a huge frame, 22 catches on the year for 210 yards and two touchdowns, but it's, it's his elusiveness on the outside. He's at 6'6". He can lower his shoulder or he can make him miss in the defensive secondary. He has great presence and he opens up the field for Santana Moss and Reggie Wayne, and then down in the plus territory when you want to score you look for a double snowman that you say Frank you love to see that guy catching the ball for touchdowns. No doubt about it. There's another great tight end in this game in West Virginia's Anthony Becht. Very similar size very similar numbers to Frank's. Yeah both 6'6 six, six, both, two, both 260 they can get it done on the inside. You see Becht's numbers 21 receptions for 267 yards and three touchdowns. Both the main targets when you take a look inside the hash is going down the field. Quarterbacks loves to see those big targets going down the field. And on the defensive side of the ball you have two of the best will linebackers or weak side linebackers in the country. First, Miami's Dan Morgan, who's a Butkus Award semifinalist. Well, they can both beat you with speed, Frank, and toughness. Dan Morgan has been plagued with that hamstring injury. He still has 58 total tackles, eight tackles for loss, three forced fumbles. He can make you pay on the inside. Just when you least expect it, he'll come up with the big play as he did last week against BC on the inside shovel pass. Nowhere for Washington to run. Dan Morgan was on top of it, and then he can circle the wagons, too, come and beat you with his speed. He comes right up through the garden center gap and makes a big play, another tackle for a loss. And Miami's got to do a much better job against the running game this week. On the other side of the football, West Virginia with 21 South Florida kids, including their weak side linebacker, Barrett Green, the top tackler with 83. Talk about a guy that's around the football. Barrett Green, 83 total tackles. That's huge. That's a big number. Two sacks, two pass breakups. He also can beat you with speed, Frank. Both teams at the linebacker spot have tremendous speed from sideline to sideline. And as poor a job as Miami did defending the run last week, at least in the first half, West Virginia gives up over 200 yards per game on the ground. That is where Miami hopefully can attack the Mountaineers. We'll be back with the opening kickoff from the Orange Bowl. It's Miami and West Virginia coming up next. Miami Hurricanes football on Sports Channel is being brought to you in part by Office Depot. Business is crazy, but Office Depot makes sense. By Mercedes. Visit your South Florida Mercedes-Benz Center today. By the Cleveland Clinic, because everyone deserves world-class care. By Nextel, how business gets done. Call 1-800-NEXTEL-9. And by AutoNation USA. It's about change. It's about time. Back at the Orange Bowl, Big East football. It's West Virginia against number 23, Miami. The Mountaineers at 3-4, Miami at 3-3. Three three. 
coming off that incredible comeback last week against Boston College. It is now bright and sunny at the Orange Bowl with a breeze coming out of the east. That'll be right to left as you watch your screen. West Virginia won the toss and deferred, so Miami will kick off and they'll have the football going to, toward the open end of the stadium. Aaron Mosier, one of the deep receivers for Miami, along with Edward Reed, seeing his first action on kickoff returns. Jared Payton, who was put on the kick return team last week, has been called back home to Chicago. Reports out of Chicago is that his father, Walter, uh, perhaps has taken a turn for the worst. Uh, there's no real definitive word, but of course, Walter Payton suffering from a rare liver disease, and Jared Payton was called home earlier this week and uh, is with his father and his family in Chicago. Jay Taylor, the West Virginia kicker, will boot it away. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you on Sports Channel. With the wind at his back, Taylor booms it deep and out of the end zone. Pretty stiff breeze coming from the east, right to left. And Miami will start first and 10 from their own 20. And we'll see who steps onto the field at quarterback for the Hurricanes. They're going to huddle on the sideline. And it appears, John, that Kenny Kelly is the guy with the helmet on and the man who will start the football game. And that's got to be the biggest concern for Butch Davis in this offense of Miami, trying to move the football with an injured Kenny Kelly. Kenny Kelly, you see his stats right there, 99 of 175 for 1,271 yards. And much improved in the touchdown-interception ratio, 11 touchdowns to only nine interceptions. And we see already a new wrinkle for for Miami huddling on the sideline, John, before the first play of a possession. First and 10 with Fulcher and Clinton Portis is getting the start at tailback. Kelly with play action. Throwing deep down for Santana Moss and overthrows him at the West Virginia 40-yard line. Perlo Bastine had the coverage and Kelly, Kelly did take a hit from Mark Thurston as he got rid of the football. Let's take a look at the Miami offense. And it is going to be Portis instead of Jackson at tailback. A late change for Miami there. Wide receivers Daniel Franks, much more involved in the offense, had six catches last week against Boston College. And on the offensive front, Martin Bibla was raved about this week by offensive line coach Art Kehoe, says he's playing great football and is going to be a great offensive guard before he's done at UM. Second and 10 for the Hurricanes. Portis the only running back. As Miami goes with the double tight end formation. Three-step drop, complete to Wayne. Wayne trying to go around Nate Terry, gets it up to just past the 25-yard line. It'll bring a third and a short five for the Hurricanes. Frank, I noticed in the beginning when they huddled on the sidelines, as we uh, see a West Virginia player down on the sideline, looked like the cornerback that came up and made the play on Reggie Wayne was down. Looked like Nate Terry, number 28, possibly down for the Mountaineers. What I did notice, Frank, on the sidelines was that Miami huddled on the sideline and took in the first play. That's exactly what Boston College did to them last week and gave fits to the Miami offense on first down, trying to match up formation to formation offensively and defensively. And uh, I think what works against you may work for you this week. Let's take a look at the West Virginia defense as they line up to start the game. Ryan Brady leads the front three. He's got three sacks. Very active group of linebackers. Chris Edmonds has four or five sacks to lead the team. Excuse me, five sacks to lead the team. Barrett Green is a very good one. And in the defensive backfield, the local product, Gary Tompkins, the strong safety, having a very good year with five pass breakups and a block kick to his credit. As they continue to work on Nate Terry, the uh, youngster out of Homestead, Florida, the senior. Let's take another look at it. It was just a quick hitch to Reggie Wayne. And I believe Terry got run over by one of his own guys and his uh, knee twisted under the pile. Yeah, it looked like just a one-step route by uh, number 87, Reggie Wayne on the outside. You see Terry coming in. It just looked like they got tangled up. Their legs got tangled up, but you really couldn't see anything definitive there. But he does go down and holding his right shoulder, it looked like almost, Frank. Well, there's nothing definitive you could tell by that replay, but they are taking Nate Terry off to the locker room. And they will check him out further there. Could be an elbow. Looks yeah. Dislocated elbow, perhaps. That's just speculation. But the way he's holding it, that looks like an elbow injury. Or, as you said, John, possibly a shoulder. Sometimes if the shoulder separates, you've got to keep that arm up at a 90-degree angle. And Terry, he was very active out of that cornerback position. He had 21 total tackles on the year and one interception for the Mountaineer defense. Not only that, but he had a kick return last That's week for right. a touchdown against Temple, as West Virginia also needed a late field goal to survive an upset bid. And they beat Temple 20-17 to a week ago. Miami going with the green uniforms for the first time this year. This is a, a look, a third jersey, as it were, an alternate jersey they unveiled last year. Which is a personal favorite of ours. I definitely like these things. It'll be third and five as they spot the ball right at the 25-yard line as we return to play. Just underway first quarter, 14.36 to go. And Miami's opening possession of the game. 
An incomplete pass on the first play and a five-yard completion to Reggie Wayne on the second. So they're letting Kenny throw the ball right away, John. You thought Miami might come out and try to establish the run with, you know, Kelly's mobility in question. And uh, I think we're going to see Ken Dorsey in this game one way or the other. Yeah, That's I, my I, gut feeling. I think so too, Frank. But I think what Butch Davis wanted to do was not get them in a, a, a third and eight or nine, maybe complete a pass like they did on second down, go for the home run on first down, get a third and medium so really West Virginia can't, put eight and nine guys on the line of scrimmage and come after an immobile Kenny Kelly, maybe give them a little bit more variety on third down. They set Santana Moss deep on the first play, and just as a little bit of news, Santana Moss this week was named as one of ten semifinalists for the Bolitnikoff Award, which is given to college football's number one top receiver. Which is well-deserved. Very good honor for Santana just to make it to that cut of ten. Moss wears number six. He is the Hurricanes' major deep threat. He'll be in the slot right with Reggie Wayne, and Andre King also in the ball game at wide receiver. Miami goes with their diamond package, three wide receivers, and Kelly will operate out of the shotgun on a third and five. Blitz coming, and that ball is short, and Wayne ran a takeoff, and Kenny thought he was going to check the pattern. So Miami will be forced to punt. We saw that last week early in the game, John, where it looked like Kenny and the receivers weren't on the same page against certain things. And you see uh, Wayne and Kelly talking it over because Reggie ran sort of a hitch and go, and Kenny threw the hitch. Well, both the receiver and the quarterback on a blitz adjustment need to see the same exact things, and that's the type of thing you see with a quarterback that maybe is used to moving and can't move. He wants to get rid of the football knowing that he can't get out of the pocket. Freddie Capshaw to kick. Antonio Brown out of Miami Central High School standing at the West Virginia 33. Capshaw will kick against the win. Good snap from Del Vecchio. Plenty of time. Capshaw hangs it up in the wind. Brown will let it bounce, and it will go out of bounds at the West Virginia 44-yard line. That's where Miami will start first and 10, a 31-yard punt for Freddie Capshaw into the win. So Mark Bulger will lead the West Virginia Mountaineers onto the field. Bulger, tremendous quarterback. Having a so-so uh, year, he lost a lot of his people, his entire offensive line, and he broke a finger early in the season and uh, just returned last week. You can see the, the little wrap on his uh, right index finger. Yeah, and his numbers, as you said, not Mark Bolger-like, and as West Virginia lines up right on the line of scrimmage, they also will huddle on the sideline to start series. On first and ten, Bolger gives it to Avon Coburn, who has a hole. Coburn across midfield, and Marquise Fitzgerald makes the tackle, but Coburn picked up almost 13 and a first down. Frank, we talk about the diminutive size of Avon Coburn. Number, he's 5'8", 190 pounds. He's only a freshman, a lot like Amos Zaraway used to be. He'd hide behind those big West Virginia Mountaineer offensive linemen there. He's just bust out of the middle, springs out of the backfield, and gets a first down on the first play of the game for the Mountaineer offense. West Virginia now with four wide receivers in. And Bolger out of the shotgun. Quick drop. Pass is caught. And this is going to be a touchdown. It's Jerry Porter who made the catch as the Miami safety went for the interception and didn't get it. Wow, just a bad angle by Ed Reed. And Miami had it played perfectly. A fade route to the outside versus cover two which means a press cornerback and a safety man on the hash. The only way you can beat that is if you hold that safety on the hash. But Ed Reed made a terrific break on the football, but the ball beat him to Porter, and Porter, all he had to do was concentrate on the body going by him, the ball coming to his hands, and sprint into the end zone for the Mountaineer touchdown. Well, Butch Davis can't be happy with that. A bad start for the Hurricanes as Jay Taylor will attempt the extra point. And he knocks it through, and with 13.35 left to go first quarter, West Virginia with the touchdown reception by Jerry Porter leads it 7-0. There's your touchdown catcher, Jerry Porter, who just three games ago was converted from defensive back to wide receiver, and he burns the Hurricanes for a 43-yard touchdown, but really a bad play by Edward Reed. Yeah, terrible judgment of the football. It looks like Edward Reed has his head on the football and then tries to go for the knockout shot, but he doesn't realize that Porter's already by him. Jerry Porter has great speed on the outside, as you said, Frank, converted from a defensive back, a safety, but the ball just beats Ed Reed to the outside. It just keeps carrying. Porter goes up to make the catch and sprints in untouched for the Mountaineer touchdown. Ed Reed back to receive the kickoff with Aaron Mosier. As you look at Jerry Porter and the scoring drive from West Virginia, just two plays. That's all it took, 31 seconds. 
one of the offensive coaches, Doc Holliday, for the Mountaineers, talking with him before the football game, said of Jerry Porter, he probably will get drafted as a receiver. He's that good of a talent just because of his vertical leap and his speed. He'll run a 4-3 or 4-4. He's a great athletic talent and probably will get drafted as a receiver, only playing there half a season. Senior out of Washington, D.C. Taylor, again with the wind at his back, hangs it up into the wind. And Reed has it at the goal line. Reed got away from one, but will reach only the 15-yard line before he is snowed under by West Virginia tacklers. Jason Davis, number 10, and Scooter Davis, number 23, among the tacklers. So Miami will start first and 10 from their 15. Well, John, last week we saw Miami off to an incredibly slow start. They did not play well on either side of the ball. As a result, found themselves down 21-0 at halftime, 28-0 in the third quarter and rally to win it but now you've got Kenny Kelly who you know obviously is not going to be 100 percent with that ankle and you don't want to fall behind uh, West Virginia a hungry team at three and four looking to find some success and a team that beat Miami two years ago here in the Orange Bowl James Jackson in at tailback he stands in the eye formation and it's Jackson with the football Jackson will get almost five Kyle Caden the middle linebacker making the tackle that's what I think Miami has to do, John, really establish that running game because West Virginia is the worst team in the Big East statistically against the run and an overall yardage given up. Especially with James Jackson. You see there 4.4 yards per carry and six touchdowns, although he is not 100%. I do agree with you. That offensive line needs to take control of the game early and beat up on the Mountaineers up front. That will help Kenny Kelly later in the football game. Double wide receiver to the top of the screen. Double tight end to the right side of the formation. And Jackson the only back. On a second and five, Kelly under pressure, got rid of it, and that ball flutters out there incomplete. Pressure coming from the backside from Mark Thurston, the Miami high product who beat Joaquin Gonzalez around the corner. Well, Thurston comes into the football game with three quarterback pressures. Make that four. He comes from the backside. As a quarterback, you have a two-receiver route to the short side. You need to have a clock in your head. That ball has to be gone because there's only a certain amount of time that offensive line can keep out linebackers rushing from the edge. And uh, you see a concerned Butch Davis early in this football game, two third and fives, now a third and seven uh, here in their second series. I take it back. It was Greg LaFair who could not get the job done on Thurston, not Gonzalez. It was the left offensive tackle, LaFair. On third down, Moss in motion. Kelly has to run. Just throws it away. He had nobody out there. Wayne and Moss were both well covered. It looked, I think, John, like it was going to be sort of a variation of a wide receiver screen to Santana Moss, but it looked like West Virginia was in man on that side of the field. That's exactly right. What happened was Moss, the motion man, coming from the Miami sideline to the West Virginia, actually ran into the rushing defender from West Virginia, number 41. It looked like Chris Edmonds, and actually through the timing of the playway, that was a good play by Kenny Kelly of just throwing the football away and not taking the hit or the sack. Capshaw in the kick, standing at a six-yard line. Antonio Brown at his 35. And again, against the win, West Virginia should get good field position. Capshaw with time off the side of his foot, but takes a good hurricane roll inside the West Virginia 40, and it will be down at the 39-yard line. So the Martin who start there, first and 10. John Miami not off to a very good start. No rhythm offensively as we saw again last week. That was a 42-yard kick by Capshaw, by the way. Yeah, that was definitely the problem last week against BC. The defense came out really with no emotion. The only guy running sideline to sideline was 44, Dan Morgan, and he's closer to 100%. But the offense, they set the tone for the game of getting the rhythm of the game. If the defense isn't going to do it, one of the teams, special teams, offense, or defense, needs to go against his Don Neyland coach team and set the tone for the Hurricanes. First and 10 Mountaineers at their 39. Coburn and Anthony Green in the I formation behind Bulger. And Matt Sweeney jumped into the neutral zone. So our referee today, Dennis Hennigan, heading the Big East crew. And it appears that will cost Miami five, and Sweeney immediately pulled out of the game by defensive line coach Greg Mark. All right, we couldn't hear that. I don't think you could at home either, but it's offside on Miami. And that's something, Frank, that hurt them against BC last week. A couple of uh, Offsides are actually procedures in the neutral zone on that defense on crucial special teams play on a field goal early and on a short yardage play that gave them 14 points early in that first quarter. First and five, West Virginia now at their 44. Bolger gives it to Coburn. Coburn with a lot of room. Coburn in midfield and cut down by Edward Reed as he reaches the Miami 45-yard line. But that is a West Virginia first down as he picked up almost 10. Well, credit that West Virginia offensive line, Frank. They're moving people around up front. 
Let's take a look at West Virginia's offense. Avon Coburn, the freshman out of Cherry Hill, New Jersey. The Mountaineers leading rusher. Antonio Brown out of Miami, 39 catches on the year. And the offensive front, led by the big offensive tackle, Tanner Russell, out of Princeton, West Virginia, 310 pounds, 6'8". First and 10 Mountaineers at the Miami 45. Play fake, Bulger, quick out, complete, and that ball caught by Antonio Brown at the Miami 38-yard line. It's a gain of seven. Mike Rumpf had the coverage for the Hurricanes. Take a look at Miami's defense. Right up front, uh, William Joseph who had a very nice game at Boston College last week. The freshman really starting to come on strong. The linebackers, Nate Webster had a, did not have a good game at BC, and he needs to play much better today. And Edward Reed, the defensive back, but he was burned on the first touchdown today. Second and short for West Virginia. Coburn with the football. Ed Reed had him for a minute. Coburn spun out of the tackle. And then Lewis, Morgan, and Webster all make the tackle right at the first down marker. It appears, though, that Coburn got enough for a first. Frank, we were talking about Coburn in the open and actually watching him warm up. We saw how small he was at 5'8", and you said with the size of this offensive line, it's really a type of they want to play hide-and-go-seek, really, with the tailback. He squirts out of nowhere and gets yardage. Take a look at this big West Virginia Mountaineer offensive line. They're pushing bodies around. You see the great down block from right to left, and then Coburn just springs out. You see Webster on the tackle along with 20 Ed Reed but not until he gets a first down. Bulger checking off as Miami showed blitz. And now Adrian Wilson jumps into the neutral zone. And I'm, I believe he'll be coming out of the game. Yeah, he is. Matt Sweeney's going in. John, again, we talked about it last week. This is a lack of focus. It's a lack of concentration. Well, it's, it's tough to go off sides. Offsides, defense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Frank, I've never played the, on defensive line, nor would I want to, but it has to be tough to go off sides when you're watching the football. You're the man right over the center. You don't listen to the quarterback. You're watching the football, and you're watching what's around you, and you see right there. That's something that they're going into this game. It's definitely a game plan by Bolger using his cadence. First and five, West Virginia. Bolger gets to Coburn. Coburn with some room. Across the 20, Coburn still going, shoved out of bounds by Mike Rump at the 13. Miami's defense hasn't made a positive play yet, and it's, it's not a big crowd at the Orange Bowl, and I don't know if that's part of the problem, John. The Hurricanes are having to manufacture their own emotion, their own excitement. They just haven't done it. Well, they're not doing it early in football games. Take a look at this offensive line. You see a big hole right up the gut. They're just... Just gaping holes. You don't want to see that as a as a defensive coach. And a great stiff arm by Colburn on Ed Reed on the outside. You see Mike Rump coming over to make the tackle. But that ball's on the 13-yard line, and West Virginia's looking to score again. Colburn. This time he's hammered. Dan Morgan in the hole along with Michael Burrow, and no gain there. Well, that time Michael Burrow came in from the outside. He fought off Anthony Green, the fullback of the Mountaineers, just threw him away. And then, as you said, Dan Morgan on the inside. It was Burrow and Morgan who make the play for the Canes defense. No gain on the play. Second and 10, West Virginia. Look at Michael Burrow, the senior out of North Miami Beach. West Virginia with four wide receivers in the game. Coburn, the only running back. Bulger out of the shotgun. Throws to the five yard line. Porter caught it, they said. I thought that well, was one ref, The other referee from behind came in and said incomplete field judge came in from behind and said incomplete. The I linesman on the far side ruled yeah. the catch. I think that's a good call, Frank. I believe that ball skipped on the short hop. And Porter made a good shortstop attempt at the ball, but let's see if Bolger does short hop him on the throw here. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty. I'm glad we got replay because I don't think I could have made that call on the field, Frank. That was made, made look very easy by Porter. Yeah, he did a good job, but he caught the top of the football and the bottom was sitting on the ground, was touching the ground. Third and 10 for West Virginia. Again, the four wide receiver formation. And timeout called. West Virginia calling timeout as the Hurricanes trying to fire up this crowd. And again, as I said, the Orange Bowl may be half full, if that. We're going to take a timeout. 10 minutes, 24 seconds left to go first quarter. It's 7-0 West Virginia over Miami. 5-0. 
Tune in to Sports Channel Florida Saturday mornings throughout the college football season. The lineup includes Saturday morning college kickoff at 10, followed by the Jim Levitt Show at 11, the Butch Davis Show at 11.30, and the Big Ten Game of the Week at 12 noon. Don't miss any of the action Saturdays on Sports Channel Florida. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you on Sports Channel Florida as we come back to play here in the first quarter. 10.24 left to go. West Virginia already leading 7-0 with a third and 10 at the Miami 13-yard line. Mountaineers with four wide receivers in. Coburn the only running back as Bulger goes from the shotgun. And here comes Miami with pressure, man coverage. Bulger, quick look in, pass complete and fumble. And it looks like Jeff Popovich got it at the Miami one yard line. Antonio Brown had the football and dropped it and Jeff Popovich comes up with the turnover. Great play by Miami. They create pressure up front. Man-to-man -man coverage. They bring seven players, does Miami. And the ball squirts out from Antonio Brown and Jeff Popovich right on top of it for the Hurricanes. Let's take another look. Just a quick hitch in the shotgun formation. A quick slant on the outside. He splits the defenders, but it looked like number 27, Marquise Fitzgerald, made the ball pop out. And you see number 33, Jeff Popovich, on top of the ball for the Canes. Take a look from the outside to the right hand there of Fitzgerald, number 27, causes the ball to leave Anto Antonio Brown's arms and right into number 33, Jeff Popovich. A big turnover, ball on the one for the Canes. Well, the Canes have to get some room here from the one. Jackson with a deep handoff. Just does get out of the end zone. Tripped up by 87, Antoine Lake. Gain of a yard. Have a look at Jeff Popovich with the fumble recovery there. Number one in the Big East in turnover margin at a plus five. Frank, it's get, great to get a turnover, but when you get it on the one, this is tough for an offense. Your goal is just to get two first downs, so no matter what happens, you can create some field position and not lose it for your defense. John, the one thing I don't like there is the deep handoff when you're on the one-yard line. You want some, I think you want something a little quicker where the running back has the ball closer to the line of scrimmage. On second and nine, Kelly flips it out to McPartland, and he's drilled right away. Rick Sherrod, the strong safety, making the tackle and a gain of only another yard. It'll be third and a long eight. It's a tough, tough position on first down if you don't get a couple yards when the ball's on the one-yard line. It's tough play calling. Some coaches and some offensive coordinators like to go deep right away on first down to create some some uh, space in that uh, offensive backfield if they're successful. You see McPartland coming out. He did score a touchdown on a pass similar to that last week against B.C. This week against West Virginia, a very minimal game. See what Miami does on a third and eight from their just past their two-yard line. Moss in motion. Fake to Jackson. Kelly, he's got Moss at the 20, and he stumbled and has run out of bounds at the 30-yard line. If he hadn't stumbled, he might have taken that to the house. Perlo Bastine shoved him out at the 31, but there's the play Miami needed, John. They yeah, needed something positive to happen offensively. That's a nice call because you get pressure defense on the outside. Moss, you see to the left side of your screen, he'll be streaking. A nice play fake. You see West Virginia all flowing towards the wide side of the field, and it's a good throw by Kenny Kelly over the outstretched hand of Chris Edmonds, the linebacker. Watch that. Just perfect touch on the football and he doesn't break stride Moss catches it in stride and has enough has plenty for the first down Moss in motion on a first and 10 from the Miami 31 get to Jackson Jackson skips to the outside cuts back and gets across the 35 to the 36 yard line Rick Sherrod, the safety number 27, making the tackle, but a good positive play, nearly six on the first down. That's something that hasn't happened for this Kane offense yet today on first down. To get positive yardage over five yards, they get six on first down, and uh, credit that play on third down. Moss did a great job of, of finding the open space going from left to right. 8.25 to go first quarter. West Virginia leading 7-0 here at the Orange Bowl. Miami with three wide receivers now in. To give to Jackson. Jackson escaped one tackle and then falls down at the 38-yard line with Sherrod there to cover him. 45, Kyle Caden made Jackson do a quick cut and lose his balance. So it'll bring up third and a long three. It's exactly what we talked about, Kyle Caden. As you said, Frank, there's a lot of speed on both sides at the linebacker position. That time, Kyle Caden showed you he can come. Number 45, he's a sophomore. He has 59 total tackles on a year. He made the running back from Miami, James Jackson, adjust. And you see him right there, 45, Caden. He's in the middle of that Mountaineer defense. On third and a long three, Miami goes with the double tight end and one running back, it's Jackson. King in motion, pitch to the short side. Jackson gets cut down shy of the first down. A great play by Scooter Davis. Held it to a gain of a yard and a half, and Miami will have to punt. That's one of Miami's 
favorite plays on the hash mark, the short side toss, but just didn't seem like there was a lot of explosion there or burst from James Jackson. Well, actually, they lost the battle at the line of scrimmage. Number 18, Mondrell Fulcher lined up at the line of the scrimmage. See him on the right there? He doesn't make the block. Actually throws the, the tackler, number 41, Chris Edmonds, to the outside and never gave, gave a lane to James Jackson to run to. There was nowhere to run on that third down play. Capshaw with his third punt of the afternoon. That's plenty of time. Driving it low into the wind. That's a nice looking kick. Brown will let it hit at the 20 yard line and it went out of bounds right at the 20. That's where West Virginia will start first and 10. So at the very least, Miami John got out of the shadow of their own goalposts and, and at least won the battle of field position there. It's really all you want to do in that situation. If you score in that situation, Frank, it's a bonus. You want to get out, get a couple first downs, at least give your special teams room to punt the football. And as you said, they get the ball on the 20 yard line. So it's a good, successful series for Miami's offense. The one thing Miami, it's Butch Davis and Art Kehoe can't be happy about is their offensive line is not taking control of the line of scrimmage against a West Virginia team which has shown no inclination to stop the run this year. First and ten Mountaineers at their 20. Fake to Coburn. Bulger on a rollout. Beck is tight end wide open across the 35 and to the 39 yard line before Mike Rumpf made the tackle. Gain of 19. Frank, that has to be a bust in coverage because I know Anthony Beck has 21 receptions on the season and he's averaging over 12 yards a catch, but that was just wide open in the middle of the football field. We mentioned Anthony in the open along with Bubba Franks. These guys know how to get open. A great play fake. Both linebackers come up to the line of scrimmage and then wide open in the Miami secondary is the senior tight end, Anthony Beck. First and 10 Mountaineers at their 39. Give the Cobra. This time, Coburn barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Dan Morgan and Clint Hurt, who has seen very limited action this year, making the tackle. No gain. It'll bring up second and ten. Well, that's where Miami needs to step it up, I believe, Frank, on the defensive line. They have to win the majority of those battles up there because they have such great linebacking speed and such great playmakers. You see Morgan and Webster and Campbell right there. Those guys can make plays. They have such great speed and tenacity. They can make plays, but if you don't win it on the line of scrimmage, you're not going to have a chance. Out of the shotgun on second and long. Bulger with time. Pass over the middle. Complete to Beck to the 45-yard line. Nate Webster, Ed Reed there on the tackle. Picked up about six. It'll bring up third and four for the Mountaineers. Good throw by Bolger that time. A timing throw to his tight end. That drew a crowd actually between three Hurricane defenders. Does Mark Bolger fit the football into his tight end? Just takes a quick snap off of the shotgun formation. You see number 20, Ed Reed. You see Campbell to the outside. Nate Webster to the inside. Good timing by the veteran quarterback, the senior on this Mountaineer offense. Three wide receivers in on a third and four. Now Brown in motion to make it a trip's left. Bulger on the rollout. Bulger throwing to the sideline. That's caught by Corey Ivey at the Miami 40. And West Virginia will move the chains. That's Picked up big, almost 14 or 15 yards. Frank, that's a big time throw. Mark Bulger, what he did, he catches the football in shotgun and actually retreats right before he throws the football to set his feet. Take a look at Bulger's technique on this one. He sprints out. He gets a good cup block on the outside. Now watch him back up and just retreat to set his feet and shoulders down the field. He knows he has to throw the football over number 22, Leonard Myers. That's a great pass and great timing between quarterback and receiver. Watch Bulger. He'll set his feet to retreat and then actually lean to the the sideline throw it over the defender of Miami and in front of number 27 Marquise Fitzgerald first down at the Canes 40 Bulger will throw it deep and that ball is intercepted by Mike Rump he was all over Antonio Brown and Mike Rump has his second interception of the season five that minutes ten seconds left to go first quarter Miami comes up with their second turnover Big turnover early in this football game. West Virginia seemed to have some rhythm established on offense. Mike Rump, if there's one thing he can do is give a cushion and play center field when he when he's allowed to set up in that position. That time he had a big cushion. He had about 12 or 15 yards on the receiver to the outside, Antonio Brown. What Bolger does is just really play your man. My man's going to be better than your man. Try to put a lot of air into the football. It looked like... Antonio Brown mistimed his jump, and the ball just comes right down in Mike Rump's lap. See the ball, a lot of air underneath the football. He's just taking a shot at the end zone, really mistimed the jump, came inside, the ball was outside, and Rump was there to make the interception. Two things, John. There was pressure, and Rump is 6'2", Brown is about 5'8". First and 10, Miami at their three. Jackson behind a good block from Mercier. Nice cutback, and Barrett Green brings down Jackson at the seven-yard line. It's a gain of four on first down. 
Well, Miami defense has come up with two turnovers, much needed turnovers, although they've both been inside their 10 yard line. So now they're saying to the offense, all right, guys, we got you the football back. It's not great field position, but do something with it. Get us some rest on the sidelines. You see the turnovers, two West Virginia offensive turnovers. Mike Rump, the culprit that time, getting the football away from Mark Bolger in that offense. And, and desperately, they need to do that. Miami needs to take a drive here, get some clock, and try to get into field goal or scoring range. Second down. And about six. Jackson again behind McPartland. A lot of room for Jackson. Gets across the 15 with first down yardage to the 16-yard line. Again, Barrett Green there on the tackle for West Virginia, but the Canes move the chains with 424 left to go first quarter. You see Jackson on the outside. I always thought Miami was a better short side running football team than they were to the wide side. A good job by Gonzalez really pinning the inside. And you see as, as well number 64, Ty Wise. They all actually turn back protection or turn back blocking. They seal the inside, and Butch Davis has to be happy with the way this offense is performing in the shadow of its own goalpost. First down Miami at the 16-yard line. West Virginia wins 7-0. Out of the eye, Jackson again. This time he is met in the hole and drives it. Picked up about a yard. We'll bring up second and nine for Miami. West Virginia with Ryan Brady in there making that tackle. Look at Jackson's rushing totals. Eight for 27. He averages 4.4 uh, per carry. He has 576 yards on the year and six touchdowns. Second and nine, Hurricanes. We're in the first quarter at the Orange Bowl. Double tight end for Miami. Fulcher in motion. And a give to Jackson. Got a block from McPartland. Jackson still going to the 22-yard line before Scooter Davis and Chris Edmonds bring him down. That'll bring up about a third and three as Jackson got five. All week, uh, the Miami scouting report on Jackson has been that he's kind of banged up. He has a sore shoulder. He has a really a bum ankle, and he's running pretty tough here early in the football game. You have to give him credit. Very courageous effort so far in this first quarter by the junior running back. Third and a long three for Miami. They've got to reach the 26-yard line to move the chains. 3.08 to go first quarter. Kelly will go from the shotgun. Three wide receivers in for Miami. Kelly flings it out to Wayne, made a great catch and dives across the 30 to the 31 for a first down. Perlo Bastine had the coverage, but Reggie Wayne stretching his 6-2 to a full extent to make that catch. Wow, big time catch by Reggie Wayne on the outside. You see he's averaging over 11 yards per catch and two touchdowns on 21 receptions, but none better than this one right here, Frank. The quarterback, Kenny Kelly, actually in man coverage. Just a quick slant to the inside, but take a look. Reggie Wayne does not care where the defender, Perlo Bastine, is on the outside. He disregards the, the concern for his body and makes a big first down for the Hurricanes. First and 10, Miami at their 31. 2.33 to go first quarter. Jackson the only running back. Quick hitch to Moss. Moss one-on-one -on -one trying to make something happen. Bastine drags him out at the 34-yard line. Held it to a gain of three. West Virginia with 21 players from south from Florida, the state of Florida. A lot of those from uh, Miami, Broward, and Palm Beach counties, particularly Palm Beach and uh, Miami-Dade County. Don Nealon does a nice job recruiting down here. You, you know, you say, well, why did those kids go somewhere else? Why did Miami keep them? You can't get everybody. That's right. There's <laughs> you only a have lot eight, of talent. You only have 85 scholarships. Second and seven for the Hurricanes from their 34. Kelly, plenty of time, swings it out to Jackson. Jackson, 35, run out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Kevin Freeman, backup linebacker, number 42, making the tackle. That's about two yards shy of a first down. It'll bring up third and short. Kenny Kelly just trying to look downfield to keep the linebackers off of his running back. He knows he wants to swing the football out to the short side of the field. That's Jackson's 10th reception on the season. He does a nice job of picking up what he can, gets out of bounds, and leaves Miami with a third down and two to go. Again, a little over two yards, about two and a half. They've got to get just past the 41 for a first down, and Kelly will go with the shotgun again and the three wide receivers in the game. Kelly with a blitz coming to the outside, and that ball was dropped by Chris Edmonds, who had an interception. 
Well, that's a play I'd, I'd like to go to the tight end there, John, because I don't think West Virginia is paying a ton of attention to Bubba Frank so far. They're so conscious of Wayne and Moss on the outside. Well, I think Kenny Kelly just got fooled a little bit that time, Frank, with the de defense. He thought he was going to rush on the end of the line of scrimmage. You see 41 Chris Edmonds, and actually Kenny looked to the wide side first, so when he turned back to the short side, someone was there that he didn't know was going to be there, just turned and threw, really predetermined where he was going to go with the football. That time he got away with it, but it was a bad decision. Delvecchio snapping the cap shot, and that punt off the side of his foot and goes out of bounds at the West Virginia 33-yard line. That's where the Mountaineers will start first and 10 with 2.06 left to go first quarter. It's West Virginia 7 and Miami nothing. And, John, uh, Miami at least, like I said, the last two times has gotten out of the shadow of their own goalposts, at least give their defense a chance to play on a a three-quarter or a two-thirds field instead of starting in their own territory. Yeah, you're right. They've done a nice job of getting out of their own end, but you have to credit this Miami defense so far. They really have only made one bad play. They misjudged a pass on the on the fade route to the outside. Ed Reed coming up trying to gamble, but the average start position, West Virginia on their own, uh, own 34, Miami on their own 10. This is Cooper Rigo, the second-string tailback. He's run out of bounds by Ed Reed and gained about three on first down. 2:01 to go first quarter. Rigo, a transfer from Notre Dame. You don't see a lot of guys going from Notre Dame to West Virginia. <laughs> no, you don't. Call it a gain of three. Kelly on the horn upstairs to uh, Larry Coker, his offensive coordinator, and Ken Dorsey, the backup quarterback, listening in. Doesn't look like Kelly's been affected by the ankle too much so far, John. No, it really hasn't. I've been watching him. He's been making the deep handoffs that he needs to make for the timing of the mesh point with the tailback. Really hasn't uh, had to move all too much. Again, Miami did jump into the neutral zone. We'll see if they were drawn off. And if so, if they did jump on their own, that's the third offside penalty on Miami in the first quarter. And I just got to say it again, John, that's a lack of focus and a lack of concentration. It doesn't look like the Canes for the second week in a row have really come out ready to play. No, on defense they haven't. This may go against West Virginia, though. The officials were talking about it. Start. It is a false start on West Virginia. All right, so I take back at least some of that. No, don't take it back. I agree with you. I just think that they got lucky there. But Miami, actually two or three guys look like jumped on the on the quarterback cadence. They really have to do a better job of still being aggressive and attacking the line of scrimmage, but they have to be aware of where they are and not listen to the snap count. Just watch the football. You see the penalties. West Virginia only has one there, right there for five yards. Miami, two for ten. Second and 12 after the penalty. West Virginia, four wide receivers in the game. Bulger out of the shotgun. Blitz coming. They pick it up. Pass is complete to Porter, and Porter gets to the 39-yard line before Marquise Fitzgerald and Leonard Myers make the tackle. He picked up seven. It'll bring up second and about five for West Virginia. Clock down to 145 to go in the first quarter. A look at Marquise Fitzgerald, who's number 27, saw action for the first time last week, coming off the uh, five-game suspension. And we expect him to see a lot of playing time. Defensive coordinator Greg Schiano saying nobody has really emerged at cornerback, separated themselves from the pack, as it were. It's third down and five. I believe I said it was going to be second. It's third down and five. Bulger again out of the shotgun. Quick pitch to Brown at the 40. And Brown pulled out of bounds at the 47-yard line, but has enough for a West Virginia first down as Leonard Myers made the tackle. Frank, just really a pick play to Antonio Brown. He comes from inside out of the formation of the three wide receivers to the wide side. Bulger does a nice job of waiting for the motion to cross the line, of, or cross the formation, and then it's a speed or, or a race to the outside with Antonio Brown winning that. But you see Brown in motion number five there. All he does is wait till he gets to the outside. He knows he's going to get a pick or a rub to the inside. You see number seven, Al Blades, running from inside out. It wasn't his man, but that was the man that was picked. Give to Cooper Rigo. Puts his head down, gets to the line of scrimmage, and no more. Damian Lewis and Nate Webster make the tackle. Perhaps he lost a yard there. Well, that's what Miami needs to do. They need to stuff the run, and they need to run the ball on West Virginia. West Virginia has a reputation as a team that doesn't tackle very well. They've given up over 200 yards per game on the ground. And I think that's where Miami really needs to get going in, in the offensive part of the game. Well, they have to win first down, Frank, and Damian Lewis and Matt Sweeney and Burrow and, and Joseph up front, they're a big part of that, stopping the West Virginia running attack on first down. On second and 11, Bulger with the rollout. Chased by Joseph. 
Bulger throws it complete. That's Corey Ivey down at the Miami 40-yard line, and he's bumped out of bounds by Edward Reed. But that's a pickup of 13 and a first down. And that's Bulger using his athletic ability on the outside. Didn't know he had that speed. He runs away from William Joseph in the Mountaineer backfield and just bides his time waiting for a receiver to pop open. He finally finds one right at the 40-yard line. Bulger using his speed. He's rolling out to his right after play action. Now watch number 94. He just kind of puts it into another gear, gears it down to throw the football, and then he throws a strike to number 8, Corey Ivey just before he goes out of bounds on the 40-yard line. It's a bad angle by Chris Campbell, though. Joseph and Campbell both had leverage, and neither one of them were able to make the play. Campbell allowed himself to get cut instead of taking a bigger angle to the outside. Rigo with the handoff, runs into the pile, and down he goes. Chris Campbell there with Nate Webster, tackled him for a loss of a yard. Nice play by two of the three linebackers there. You see Campbell and Webster in the Mountaineer backfield. That's what they have to do on first down. You see Nate there, a little war wound on that helmet. He's been doing some headbutting in the, in the Mountaineer backfield so far today. That should be the last play of the first quarter as you see the clock in the lower right part of the screen winding down. And we have reached the end of the first quarter here at the Orange Bowl. After 15 minutes of play, it's West Virginia 7 and Miami nothing. They'll change ends. West Virginia will have its second and 11 when we return for the second quarter here on Sports Channel. Support UM student athletes by making a donation to the Hurricane Club. Every dollar raised goes toward the Student Athlete Scholarship Fund. Support Hurricane Athletics by making your donation today to the Hurricane Club at 305 284 6699 or 1 800 GO CANES. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you on Sports Channel as we get ready to start the second quarter. The teams have switched ends and now Miami with a rather stiff 15 to 20 mile per hour wind, I would guess, at their back. But West Virginia has its second and 11 at the Miami 41. West Virginia scoring on the opening possession, a 43-yard touchdown pass from Mark Bolger to Jerry Porter. Miami has come up with two turnovers defensively since then to keep West Virginia at bay, but the Miami offense with poor field position throughout the first quarter hasn't gotten much generated. Yeah, the Miami offense, their averaging starting position on the field has been their own 10-yard line. No one likes to do that, and uh, to their credit, they've gotten out of the hole both times. They had the ball inside the 10-yard the line, and they've gotten at least two or three first downs and forced the punt back to the West Virginia side of the 50, so Bolger and company on offense doing a nice job for them moving the football in their first series, actually the first pass of the game to the outside uh, for a touchdown. That sets the score at 7 to nothing. West Virginia huddled uh, toward their own sideline and made their play call there. And it looks like the three wide out formation with only one running back. That's Cooper Rigo. Antonio Brown right now is lined up in the fullback spot, but he will go in motion. I can't imagine that Antonio Brown would stay there. And indeed, he comes out to the right side of the formation to make it a three wide out set. On second down, Bulger throwing for Brown and incomplete. Good coverage by Leonard Myers, who came over the top trying for the deflection. That'll bring up third and long for the Mountaineers. Yeah, actually, the Mountaineers went into the teeth of the Miami defense. That, that defense and Leonard Myers was rolling up. He actually was off about 10 yards, but he knew he had Edward Reed behind him. So Myers coming up saw the quick pass, and his job anyway was to cover the flat. He made a nice break on the football, and actually the quarterback, Mark Bolger, threw that one away, threw it low. So uh, over the top, Leonard Myers could not pick it off. Three wide receivers again in for the Mountaineers on this third and 11. Miami going with the dime defense. Only three rush linemen. Bulger rolling out. Bulger throws, and oh, is that ball caught? Holy cow, did he take a hit. Wow. Antonio Brown just got drilled but held onto the football. He's short of the first down. I can't right. believe he held that ball. I don't know how he catches it either. Mike Rump, just as we said, the coverage was rolling up on the previous play. That's exactly what happened. Mike Rump is waiting in the flat for Antonio Brown to come in and out, and he's just playing the cornerback position. He has the short side of, of the coverage there, rolls up, and just lays his right shoulder right underneath the chin strap of Antonio Brown. It's a miraculous catch by Brown and a big play by the cornerback, Michael Rump. Fourth down and two. Bulger out of the shotgun. Rolling to the right. Throwing down the field. Caught by Ivy at the 15. And down he goes there. Reed and Rumpf making the tackle. But a big conversion on fourth and two for the Mountaineers. Well, the offensive team that's making the play and actually the quarterback that's making a play so far is Mark Bolger, the senior out of Pittsburgh. He rolls to his right. He gets the corner very clean. He waits for 
his big target, number eight, Corey Ivey, to clear the, the first set of Miami defenders, goes up for the football. This is a nice pass. He gave him enough air to go up for the football, yet he put it in between his shoulder pads, so if somebody comes through his body, he's going to catch the football. You see Mike Rump making his second consecutive tackle in a row, but it's good enough for a Mountaineer first down. That was a great throw because he had to drop it over Rump and in front of Reed. That was a great throw by Bulger from the 16 on first down. Coburn. Tried to get away in the backfield and could not. Good penetration by Campbell forced the play. And then it was Damian Lewis and Dan Morgan finishing it off. No gain on the play. 13-25 to go second period. It'll bring up second and 10 for West Virginia. Yeah, that, was, that was bad. Frank, Miami's defense has been asked to keep West Virginia out of the end zone a couple times early in the first quarter. Now they're going to be asked to keep them out of the end zone again. The ball you see. Second down and 10, right about on the 16-yard uh, line. On second and long, backs in the eye. Bulger under pressure, delivers it to Beck, and that short hopped him at the 3-yard line. Good pressure that time. Nate Webster coming on a blitz, and he got right up in Bulger's grill for the incompletion. That's the key to the incompletion right there. Beck, one-on-one on one on the outside. You're going to win that match. I don't care who you're up against. A 6'6", 260 pounds. That time, Mark Bulger didn't have enough time to put the football up in the air. You see pressure right from his throwing side, right on his right side. Nate Webster coming from that linebacker position came free right in the face of Mark Bulger. Didn't have enough time to make a good throw. Third and 10 for West Virginia. At the Miami 17. Bulger working from under center with a double tight end. Going on the fade pattern, and that ball is incomplete. Good jam by Mike Rump on Corey Ivey, disrupted the pattern. And that'll bring up a fourth, and the field goal unit will come onto the field with Jay Taylor. John, I don't know if you could see it, but uh, Mike Rump really got an excellent jam on Corey Ivey really disrupted the whole play. Corey Ivey stayed on the line of scrimmage for about two seconds, and the ball was up in the air, clearly an overthrow, but that was caused by the great pressure on the line of scrimmage by Rump. Well, Zach Eng Engler will hold, and Jay Taylor will attempt from 33 yards away. Taylor gets it away, plenty of distance, and it is good. And with 12 minutes and 46 seconds left to go in the second quarter, it's now West Virginia 10 and Miami nothing as Jay Taylor converts his 10th field goal in 11 tries this year. Mountaineers lead it 10 zip. Broadcast rights to this telecast have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by ESPN Regional solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, transmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of ESPN Regional or Sports Channel Florida is strictly prohibited. 10-0, Mountaineers lead it as the Miami defense on the phone. John, we were talking during the break. It just seems a lot like last week at Boston College in this sense. There doesn't seem to be a lot of emotion on the guys in the green jerseys right now. They... I don't want to use the word flat because I think it's overused, but they just don't seem quite ready to play. That that extra spark isn't there. Yeah, you see the guys on the sidelines. Everybody's on the phone looking for answers. How can they stop West Virginia? It's 10 nothing with 12.46 left to go. But I agree with you. The emotion of, of comes from defense. It comes from setting the tone. And offensively, it comes from being aggressive with your offensive line and just going after people. And as of right now, I don't see Miami in either department really in control of the offensive line or defensive lines. Taylor to kick into the win. Directional kick. Andre King at the six. King hit hard, bounced off one man, then taken down at the 18-yard line. Number nine, Lewis Daniels, backup defensive back, making the play after James Davis, the defensive back, had made the initial hit. Miami will start first and 10 from their 18-yard line. We'll take a break. 12.38 to go second quarter. Mountaineers leading 10-0. Don't miss Sunday morning NFL, the only live 90-minute NFL pregame show dedicated to Florida's teams. Join your hosts, Ned Smith, John Congemi, Frank Frangi, and Dave Worth each Sunday as they preview matchups for the Dolphins, Jaguars, and Buccaneers. The action begins at 10 a.m. exclusively on Sports Channel Florida. That Congemi guy, he's pretty good. I'll tell you what, that guy goes around to a lot of places, huh? He gets around. He's got a lot of frequent flyer lines. <laughs> It's 10-0 Mountaineers, 12.38 left to go second quarter. This game isn't nearly as bad as last week's at Boston College in terms of how it started, but if you're Miami, you want to get the ball rolling right now. You don't want to let West Virginia kind of build their confidence and build momentum. You want to get things going offensively. Miami really didn't do much in the first quarter with the football. On first and 10 from the 18, double tight end in for Miami. Fulcher and Franks. Jackson the running back. Jackson with the football. Jackson will get about three to the 21-yard line. Barrett Green there to make the tackle for West Virginia. 
John, I don't know. Is West Virginia loading up the box to stop the run and challenging Miami to throw, or what are they doing right now? Well, Miami's now? going double tights, and I think that's a good move because I think so far in this season, Mondrell Fulcher's been wasted at the fullback position. So they want to get him into the football game at double tights, but that still doesn't excuse from moving bodies off the line of scrimmage. Just really no, not a lot of big gaping holes to run through tackle to tackle for James Jackson. On second and seven, it's Fulcher in motion. Kelly. On the half roll, tried to set up Jackson, now finds him at the 20 with Mercier in front. Jackson got away from one, shoved out at the 29-yard line, very close to the first down, and I think he has it where they made the spot. Corey McIntyre, backup middle linebacker, making the tackle for West Virginia. Nice play of, uh, nice job of setting up the play by Kenny Kelly. Really no ill effects from the sprained ankle. Watch Kenny Kelly's mobility. He sprints out to the right and then bides some time. Really nothing there because James Jackson's being held up at the line of scrimmage. Then he finally finds him on the screen. A nice block out in front of James Jackson to provide enough running room for the Hurricane first down. James took a pretty good shot in the back there, so he'll go out. And Clinton Portis in a tailback now for Miami. First and 10 from near the 30. This is Portis. Not much room to run. We said that a lot last week in the first half. It's Chris Edmonds, number 41, the outside linebacker, making the tackle. Look at Miami. The first four times they had the ball this afternoon. Three and out, three and out, seven plays and a punt, nine plays and a punt. Horrible field position, of course. So they haven't started past their own 20. Average 11 and a half yard line. That's the average start of Miami's possessions. Second and eight for the Hurricanes. Give Portis two on the last play. Kelly to the outside. Moss made the catch, and his knee hit down at the 44-yard line, but it's enough for a Miami first down as he picked up 13 yards. That's what you'd like to see. Kenny Kelly dropping back and going to his outside receivers. I don't care who Miami faces in the Big East besides Virginia Tech. They should have the advantage with their skill positions on the outside because Mo Santana Moss is, is a one-in-a-lifetime player. He can make plays. He's great coming out of break. See him right there. Very crisp. Comes back to the football. Secures the ball. And on the other side, you got Reggie Wayne. So you should have an advantage on the outside for the Miami Hurricanes. King and Aaron Mosier now win a wide receiver for Miami. Portis on a first down. Portis bursting through to near midfield. That's a nice gain on first down as he got about six. Gary Tompkins, the safety out of Monsignor Pace High School in Miami, making the tackle. We'll look at Kenny Kelly's stats on the day. Nothing wrong with those numbers. No, high percentage. He's making good decisions. The only time he tried to force the football, I think he was fooled by the blitz on the outside by Chris Edmonds. But take a look at that last play. That was the first time you saw a big gaping hole on the inside. And actually, Portis cut it back, and he did a nice job of gaining a big gain on first down. Moss and Wayne back in at wide receiver. Second and four for the Hurricanes. At midfield, that's Fulcher in motion. Give to Portis. Portis trying to bounce outside, and Gary Tompkins wrestles him down for a loss of a yard. Modril Fulcher got stood up as he was the lead blocker. And I don't think he's been nearly as good blocking this year as he was last year. Last year he was a devastating blocker. And Coming from the H-back or fullback, I just don't think he's doing as good a job as he did as a tight end. No, it looked like he ducked his head that time and tried to take on Barrett Green, and that bought enough time for Gary Tompkins to come from that strong safety position and make a big hit on the freshman running back, Clinton Portis. You see Don Solinger giving Fulcher an earful right there. It's third and still about four, closer to five yards. Out of the shotgun. Kelly with a blitz coming. Overthrow Santana Moss. That's just a poor throw. That ball sailed on him. Perlo Bastine had the coverage. Another blitz adjustment. Another blitz that time by the Mountaineers in the secondary. Right in the face of Kenny Kelly. Knew he had to get rid of the football to the outside. Trying to hit his wide receiver Santana Moss on the adjustment. As you said, Frank, I don't know sometimes if that wind helps you or hurts you when you have such a gusting wind at your back. Sometimes the ball seems to just take off and sail on you. Freddie Capshaw stands at his 35. Antonio Brown back to receive for the Mountaineers. Capshaw hangs it high, wind at his back. Brown will catch this ball at the three-yard line. He signaled fair catch. That's a bad mistake by Antonio Brown, the sophomore out of Miami, Florida. You stand at the 10. If the ball's going over your head, you let it go. 9-19 left to go second quarter. West Virginia, though, still leading by a score of 10-0 over the Hurricanes. 9-19 left to go second quarter. A look at the sophomore, Antonio Brown, who's a dynamite kick returner, but made a very bad mistake on this last punt from Freddie Capshaw. Exactly right. You, you mentioned it, Frank. When you're at your 10-yard line, you have your feet planted on a 10. If you go backwards, even one step, 
let the football go. That time, Brown actually retreated past his five-yard line. He's close to the three, and that's a heck of a catch just to secure the football. What happens if that ball right. bobbles out and Miami scores an easy touchdown? It's, it's a great catch, but you don't want your punt returner catching the ball no. over his shoulder like that. All right, first and ten, West Virginia at their two-yard line. This is where Miami's defense has got to bow up and get him back in the game. Bulger with a play fake. Bulger chased in the end zone, just throws it up for grabs, and that ball's intercepted by Leonard Myers. Leonard Myers back to the 13-yard line. A spectacular one-handed interception by Leonard Myers. Bulger trying to avoid the safety, John, threw it into coverage. Well, we talked about it, Frank. This is where Miami needed to make a stand prior to this series. The worst West Virginia had the football in a possession to start a series was their own 20. This time, watch the receivers almost collide in the middle of the field. That's what made the football hold on so long. That's what made Bolger hold on to the football for such a long time. Then he made a bad decision by just throwing it up for grabs, but the receivers actually ran into each other, and you see big number 98, Matt Sweeney, on the legs of Bolger. That time, just a terrific one-handed, right-handed grab by number 22, Myers, on the interception. James Jackson, the lone running back for the Hurricanes. Jackson with the football. Jackson will go nowhere. Number 99, Greg Robinette making the tackle. No gain. Maybe lost even a half a yard. The Miami offense just has not been able to win the battle at the line of scrimmage most of the day, John. West Virginia statistics belying their performance today. They give up over 200 yards a game on the ground, but they've looked nothing like that type of defense today. You're right, Frank. You would think Miami would be able to come in and win the battle at the line of scrimmage and push West Virginia around offensively, but so far, West Virginia defense is holding its own. See, that first down play, that's where I'd like to take a shot at the end zone, right after the turnover. On second and ten. Kelly, complete to Wayne over the middle, gets inside the ten to the eight-yard line. Gained about five. Barrett Green there on the coverage for West Virginia. Kenny Kelly turning to the sideline, asking the coaches to really run that play over again because he saw Bubba Franks after he threw the football, and he's motioning to the sidelines, hey, give me another chance. I think I can hook up with Bubba, and I think Bubba was trying to tell him about that. He was on the bottom of his screen, just to missed him on the, on the down the field, but Wedgie Wayne coming from right to left, just on the quick drag, really minimal gain. Third and six for Miami from the Mountaineer eight. Against a four-man rush. Kelly flips that's it a, out to Jackson, lateral. and that's a lateral, and it goes out of bounds at the 15. Well, if Kenny Kelly's healthy, he probably runs the football. That's exactly right, Frank. That's a sure sign of him not having confidence in his ankle. He, he would have definitely tucked that football to try to get hey, what he lateral. could. That time, he He's sort of panicked because he says, I can't run. That's been taken away from me from my own health standpoint. Right here, he would have tucked the football and tried to make a play. But uh, he did didn't turn it over. That's the one good thing you can say about that play is he didn't turn the football over. He gives an opportunity for Crossland to come in and kick a field goal. And you see Kelly and Wayne again discussing things. It just not real good communication or understanding for whatever reason. Crossland out of Zach Hart's hold and he missed the field goal. From 31 yards away, 32 yards away, Crossland misses and he continues to have troubles. A game-winning field goal last week, but after that interception, that's where you've got to take control of this football game and get back in it. Still, 10-0 West Virginia, 7.37 left to go second quarter. You see the score and time remaining second quarter. Miami blowing an opportunity after the Leonard Myers interception as Crossland misses the field goal. Cooper Rigo trying to get to the outside, tripped up by Ed Reed after a gain of about three. John, those are opportunities you just cannot let go by the board. Especially when you're not clicking on either side of the football. You're struggling with field position. You're struggling with offense and defense. And then you come out and you struggle on special teams. Andy Crossland, really the win behind his back, just never had this ball between the posts. It started actually right on the left upright and continued to leave the goal post instead of coming back in to the goal post. Well, if you're a golfer, you say he came off that one. Out of the shotgun on a second and seven. Give to Rigo. He's got nowhere to go. Matt Sweeney and then William Joseph drop him for a loss of a yard and a half. I think Miami's catching a break, Frank, with Rigo in the football game instead of Coburn because Coburn seemed to be hitting the holes and cutting back more than Rigo. Rigo really just running to get tackled, and Miami doing a nice job there. That time winning the line of scrimmage battle up front and really stuffing the run the first two plays. Bring up third and nine for West Virginia from their 21. See Cooper Rigo's numbers on the year. Certainly respectable for a backup tailback. Three wide outs in for the Mountaineers. It's Brown in motion. He'll make it back to the near side. 
Bulger to throw over the middle. Caught by Beck, this tight end. Nice diving catch. Actually dropped it. He did drop it. They call it incomplete. So Miami catching another break there. Good effort by Anthony Beck, the tight end we talked about. He wanted the football early, Frank. See his head turned around. He was wide open, and actually a poor throw by Bolger. Didn't put it on his body. If he had came off and threw it on his third step, Beck had his easy catch and an easy first down for the Mountaineers. So it's a three and out for the Miami defense. Mark Fazolari in for a punt. Santana Moss standing in Miami territory to receive it. Against the win. Pretty good kick. Moss. That is 40. Santana break it away. And Moss has it inside. West Virginia territory flag well away from the football. I mean 30 Andy, yards Andy away from the football. And if that's on Miami, there's no excuse for that. You're right. Might be 40 yards away from the play, Frank. Moss had brought it back to the West Virginia 42. Wow. And they're going to bring it back. They're going to march it off from the Miami 44-yard line. Dennis Hennigan, our referee. You see Butch Davis not thrilled with that. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. That'll bring it back to the Miami 34. And if I'm Butch on the sidelines, I want to know who's it on because really the play was at least 30 to 40 yards away from where the flag ended up uh, coming down on the Orange Bowl grass. Well, we're talking about it again. We talked about it last week, this lack of focus, this lack of rhythm. You see Miami has forced three turnovers today, but they have not converted on any of them. Now, granted, two of those turnovers came at the Miami 1 and the Miami 3-yard line, but the third came at the West Virginia 12, and the Canes got zero points out of it. They do have the football back, first and 10 at their 34. Jackson, the only running back, he has the football. And you see how the blocking gets stacked up, but James bounces it outside and gets up to the 44-yard line, picked up seven. You see the blockers just getting stood up, John. They're just not controlling their guy. They're not pushing West Virginia off the ball. Well, credit James Jackson. You have to run against this set. There's only six guys at the, at the point of attack. The linebacker walked out strong side, but credit Bubba Franks. That's great drive blocking down the football field. Actually, Bubba six and seven yards down the field, and James Jackson makes a nice run. Kelly throwing outside off the fingertips of Reggie Wayne. And a good drop by Chris Edmonds, the linebacker, really forced that incompletion. Yeah, Chris Edmonds has done a nice job forcing Kenny Kelly to be very accurate throwing to the short side. You see Kenny Kelly saying, hey, that's my fault. That was a bad throw. i got to make that play. But actually, Chris Edmonds did a good job of forcing Kelly to make the perfect pass to the short side. 5.31 left to go second quarter. Third down and about two, a little, about, little over two yards. Call it two and a half. Again out of the shotgun. West Virginia crowd in the line of scrimmage. Blitz coming. Kelly again overthrows Reggie Wayne. Again a poor throw by Kenny Kelly. Second series in a row he's missed his wide receiver. I don't know, John, do you think about putting Kenny Dorsey in the next time you get the ball? Frank, it's definitely a consideration. And Kenny Kelly's credit, it's tough. And, and being a former college quarterback and being uh, injured a lot in two previous, in two of my middle years, it's tough to come out and have the fundamentals of throwing the football. When one, you don't practice, and two, you're not healthy from the waist down. It's tough to get your feet underneath you to work in, in collaboration with the top of your body. And sometimes it's tougher, it's easier said than done to go on out and play in a game without practicing. Capshaw again drives it deep, and this time Brown's going to have no part <laughs> he, of it. He, he didn't move, right? He didn't move an inch. In fact, if anything, he moved forward. <laughs> he said, hey, that's not my ball. So it's first and, uh, first and 10 West Virginia, 56-yard punt from Freddie Capshaw. John, I don't know much about routes against blitz breakoffs, but it would seem to me that an easier throw for Kenny in his condition would be something over the middle to the tight end. Well, actually, what they're doing to alleviate that, Frank, is they're putting him in the shotgun. They already know they want to adjust. West Virginia showed their hand early, so Kenny knows as soon as he's going to catch the football in shotgun, he's got a double adjust on the outside. He's either got a hitch by the inside receiver or a double quick slant. That time, he just didn't get it done. But on third and two, Miami's lining up in the shotgun, and they're really giving up the running game in the last two possessions yeah, on third and short. This is Coburn. Squirts through and picks up almost five. Now Blades on the tackle along with William Joseph. Five minutes, ten seconds, and the clock moving here in the second quarter. That's why if I'm West Virginia and their offensive uh, snap, I like Coburn in a football game. Seems to slither through the Miami uh, defensive line and get into the secondary. 
a little bit quicker than the backup does, and I, I believe that he'll stay in the game as long as he's healthy. He gives West Virginia the best threat of winning this football game. Second and five for the Mountaineers at their 25. Bulger checking off. Gives it to Coburn, and this time he's stacked up. Took one hit in the backfield, and Chris Campbell got him for a loss of a yard, and then the cavalry arrived. Yeah, credit Matt Sweeney. I think he was the first guy in in the backfield, and Don Neela not happy with that play. You see him on the sidelines. But I take a look at 98. He beats the, the uh, block up front of number 69, Rick Gillum, right at the point of attack. And then you see Morgan and Joseph and the rest of the herd in green jerseys back to make the tackle, and, and really a nice play on second down. Loss of almost two. It'll bring up third and about seven. Coming up on four minutes to go second quarter. 10-0 West Virginia here at the Orange Bowl. Bulger out of the shotgun. Only a three-man rush. He reloads, hits Ivy over the middle, and that ball came out. I think it did. I think that's Miami's football, Frank. Looks like the officials are saying West Virginia got it back. Now, was the pass complete and a fumble? Or was it an incompletion? I think I think they're going to give him the completion, Frank, and a fumble, and West Virginia retains possession of the ball. It's first down at the 33-yard line. Clock moves now with 3.43 to go second quarter. Butch Davis questioning the official's call. Watch Bolger reload. He wants to throw it early, and then he figures he has more time than he thought, and he lets Corey Ivey clear the linebacker. Looked like that ball almost bounced into the secondary, into Al Blades' hands. Either way, it's a first down West Virginia. Play fake. Bolger on the rollout. He's got his man Brown up at the 42-yard line. He'll gain nine as Mike Rumpf made the tackle. Frank, it looks way too easy for the West Virginia offense. They're getting the corner without any hesitation. The down blocks of either on Joseph on the outside or Burrow to the other side, and they're really escaping, and the quarterback has a, a clear lane to throw the football. Dan Morgan coming in late, scraping from the weak side linebacker position, but that's an easy throw and catch. You see the coach, uh, offensive wide receiver coach, Doc Holliday on the sidelines, but that's an easy throw, pitch and catch for Bolger. Second and a yard. Coburn on the delay, has a first down, and across the 45 to the 47-yard line in the arms of Ed Reed, but he picked up almost six. West Virginia will move the chains and stop the clock with 2.40 left to go second quarter. Frank, this is a young offensive line that Colburn is running behind, and, and not a lot of leadership up there, but they're doing a good job on the uh, offensive line, establishing the line of scrimmage and taking Miami wherever they want to go. That's a lot what BC did last week in West Virginia, really watching those game films and, and doing a lot what BC did, run up the middle. First and 10 Mountaineers at their 48. Bulger gives it to Coburn. Coburn sticks his head down, runs right into Dan Morgan's chest and picks up a yard. Second and nine upcoming for the Mountaineers. And it's an orange bowl that's about half full to begin with, and it's just totally dead right now. There's no emotion in this stadium from the home team or the home fans. They had a chance to get back into this football game on the on the big interception by Myers, but Miami comes away with no points, and that really took any excitement or any enthusiasm that was on the team or in the stands right out of the orange bowl. On second and nine from the Mountaineer 49. Brown in motion. Flips it out to Brown. That might be a lateral, and he's tripped up by Marquise Fitzgerald and loses four yards. Good reaction by Marquise Fitzgerald as they motion Brown to make it a triple wide receiver to the short side of the field. Frank, it looked like they had seen that play on film before because the Miami defense, they had, you see number 27, Marquise Fitzgerald, number 20, Ed Reed, just rotating from from up the football field into the Mountaineer backfield. They had no chance of gaining any positive yards on that play, and that was a great pre-snap look on defense. Third and 12 for the Mountaineers. Bulger out of the shotgun from his 45. Gives it to Coburn. Coburn got a block across the 50 and to the Miami 44-yard line. He's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. And West Virginia, I would imagine, would go for it. They got nothing to lose with 48 no. seconds to go. They've got uh, two timeouts remaining, and they can let this clock wind down and really gamble and roll the dice. Their defense really no threat of Miami moving the football. Let's see what Don Nealon and that offensive staff does. They are wasting a lot of time here. They have not used a timeout. 
They, Bulger right now just staring at the sideline. They could take it all the way down. It seems like uh, to about 25 seconds left. There's a penalty flag on the on the field in the defensive secondary. They're, They're going to call, call Miami a legal substitution out there. Miami saying, wait, we're not huddled. We didn't break the huddle with 12. And that gives West Virginia first down. Wow. And I have, if you're a Miami fan, there's some of them booing, and they have reason to boo that. I don't believe in booing college athletes, but that's just a, a mental mistake and a part of the coaches and the players. So it's first down at the Hurricane 38 with 27 seconds left to go in the second quarter. And now whistle stop play again. Miami calls timeout. Well, this is just utter confusion on the Miami sideline right now. Butch Davis giving an earful to one of the officials. We'll take a timeout. 22 seconds left in the second quarter. It's West Virginia 10, Miami nothing. Back at the Orange Bowl, Butch Davis giving it to referee Dennis Hennigan. And I think, John, what he's saying is, hey, West Virginia's huddling with 13 guys near their sideline. Why can't we do the same thing? And I think there's an interpretation of rules problem right there. That was an unusual flag because it seemed like West Virginia was just going to let the, the clock wind down. They had no intention of running a play, nor were they in an offensive set or in a huddle. They were just scattered behind the line of scrimmage, and, and so was Miami. No one was doing anything, and then the flag came in. So, you know, Butch Davis has a reason to, uh, to be upset on the sidelines. Four wideouts in for West Virginia. First and ten with 22 seconds to go. They're at the Hurricane 38. And there's movement on the left side. Left offensive tackle came out of his stance. Matt Wilson, number 71. And that'll cost West Virginia five, yeah, but it doesn't take the first down away. Uh, uh, I got him. So they'll move it back to the Hurricane 43, and it'll be first and 15. Well, last week, Butch Davis said he was calm in the locker room. There wasn't a lot of screaming and shouting because effort wasn't the problem. It was execution. Today, I think he might do some yelling. I think effort is the problem right now, especially offensively. Defense has three turnovers. Bulger, quick three-step drop, complete to Asageda. Run out by Leonard Myers at the Hurricane 36. Pickup of seven. Frank, that's exactly the type of play that Miami is trying to accomplish on a blitz adjustment. You see Bolger catches the football in shotgun, really sets his feet and steps into the throw, but it's to the short side of the field. Look like Miami's blitz adjustments are all going to the wide side of the field. Second and eight, now with 19 seconds left to go. Again, four wideouts in for Miami. Bulger out of the shotgun. Under some pressure, fires across the middle and incomplete. Going for Corey Ivey at the 25-yard line. And Bulger wound up on his keister as uh, Damian Lewis put the wood to him. Yeah, I bet Bolger thought he threw a strike because he saw Corey Ivey coming off the underneath coverage, and it was great anticipation by number four, Mark Bolger, the senior quarterback, of throwing over the middle. The left side of your screen, you'll see Corey Ivey, but up the middle, you'll see the pressure. You see Corey Ivey right there. He thought he threw a perfect pass. He was going past Marquise Fitzgerald, but when you take a look at the replay, it looked like Colburn, 22, broke open before Ivey did. On third and eight, Bolger. Throwing again down the middle, and did he short hop it to Ivy? Yes, he did. Officials say incomplete, and that'll bring up fourth down. Maury Ivy, pretty big target, 6'2", 190 senior out of Boca Raton. And let's see if Don Nealon just takes a shot at the end zone here with 10 seconds left in the half. Well, they just need to get seven or eight yards to, to stop the clock. They have a timeout. The clock will stop with the movement of the chain. So, really, you just want to get a pass of about 10 yards or 12 yards, stop the clock, and have your field goal team come on after the timeout. And Mark Bulger now signals for a timeout as West Virginia will talk it over. Well, John, the good news if you're a Miami fan is last week was 21-0 at halftime. Right now, if, if it stays the way it is, it's only 10-0. Obviously, you don't want to let West Virginia get any more points here, but offensively, Miami's just been stuck in neutral the whole first half. And really, they had a golden opportunity early in the second quarter, midway through the second quarter, when the Miami defense got one of the three turnovers 
finally in good field position, great field position, and Miami actually goes backwards on the set of downs and then misses the field goal. And Kenny Kelly on the sidelines waiting to get another opportunity to go in. That won't happen until the third quarter, but this Miami offense needs to go back in, huddle at halftime, and really try to figure out what's been going on on offense. They're not winning the line of scrimmage battles, and really not a lot of running room between the tackles, and Kenny Kelly and the wide receivers have seemed to have been on the different page you know, the entire first half. I'm gonna I'm gonna harp on something, okay? Go ahead, get on that soapbox, Frank. Where's double eight? Where's double snowman? They have not thrown the ball once to Bubba Franks this half. Yeah, we mentioned them in the open. We mentioned both tight ends, a big part of the offense. And when you're a quarterback that's struggling, the easiest pass on the field is to your tight end, really going down and running an option route or getting open early in the football game to get some confidence. Now, I do credit Miami with one thing. They tried to go into the shotgun to alleviate the pressure on Kenny Kelly and throwing quick hitches to the outside. But you have to have a compliment to that. But he's missing, the, th he's missing the throws, for one thing. You're right. He's missing the opportunities that the offensive coaching staff are trying to provide him with. Fourth and eight for West Virginia. Ten seconds to go in the half. Again, rolling out. Bulger has a man open. And it's complete to Ivy down to the 16-yard line. And West Virginia will have a shot at a field goal with five seconds left. And again, Miami has no counter to Bolger leaving the pocket. They're cutting the defensive ends, and no one with pressure in the quarterback's face. The quarterback actually has two receivers that are wide open. You see a great cut block by Coburn. You see two wide, wide receivers open. You see the short man, number five, Antonio Brown, and you see the pass go to Corey Ivey, number eight. Zach Anglin will hold. Jay Taylor will attempt from 33 yards away. Kick is away, has plenty of distance, and it is good. And that is the end of the first half. And after a half, it's a very flat Miami team, zero. West Virginia with 13, and Miami just has not done anything offensively. I have three turnovers on defense, but West Virginia's control the game. We'll be back with our halftime highlights, interviews, and more after this. At halftime, it's West Virginia 13, Miami nothing. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you on Sports Channel. And uh, two weeks in a row, John, befuddled trying to figure out a first half for the Miami Hurricanes. Really no good explanation for it against a team, as you said, on paper, they probably better than. But let's take a look at the numbers at halftime. Rushing yards. And look at the pass yardage for Miami, 76. And Mark Bulger has creased him for 201 yards. First downs 14 to 5. West Virginia guilty of the three turnovers, but Miami just hasn't been able to take advantage. Yeah, really, the turnovers have not been a, a hallmark or a staple point in this football game. Miami not being able to take advantage of the one they received on the 12 yard line, but total yards, Frank. Take a look 265 yards for the Mountaineers and only 119 for UN. That's something that has to turn around. The defense has played well enough. The offense just doesn't ha hasn't done enough in the first half to create any points. Well, I will say one thing West Virginia averaging 192 yards in the air. They've already exceeded exceeded that in the first half, but it's still only 13-0. We'll see if for the second week in a row, Miami can pull off a comeback. We'll be right back with the second half kickoff after this from the Orange Bowl on Sports Channel. Ready to start the third quarter at the Orange Bowl. You're looking out on what's become a very sunny and cloudless sky here in Miami, Florida. It was raining this morning, but it cleared up about an hour before game time. Field is in great shape. So there's no excuses for Butch Davis and Greg Schiano and their team. They need to be playing better football, and they just are not right now. Yeah, it's tough to describe, Frank, how they could come out and play really without emotion in this football game. They got by. I don't know how they got by last week. It was a miracle that they were even in that football game the way they played for three quarters. And they came out today thinking, hey, we revived our, our chance at a successful season, especially at the Big East Conference Championship. And now they come out and they're, down 13 points to a team that barely got by against Temple with a, a kick return and a field goal late in the game last week. Andy Crossland will kick it off. Sean Terry, whose brother Nate went out with a dislocated elbow on the first play from scrimmage and will not be back in this game. Sean Terry and Lewis Daniels back to receive as Crossland kicks off with the win, pounds it deep, and that's going to go out of the end zone. In fact, he almost knocked it through the uprights. Take a look if you can. If we can get a shot of the goalposts on the, uh, the closed end of the stadium to our left, it looked like the wind has been blowing so much. Those things are actually bent backwards. Yeah, they're tilted back, they're definitely. The, the wind's been rocking that goalpost back and forth all game. And actually, when the wind blows, it goes back uh, and actually elevates towards the stands. And when the wind stops, it actually comes back forward. Yeah, it's almost like it's on a spring. But you're on that single support up uh, upright. And that's what will happen if there's a strong wind. 
They look almost normal right now. You really can't tell a lot from that angle, but from our vantage point, like right now they just blew back. First and 10, West Virginia from their 20 as we start the third quarter. Mark Bulger, who changed his number from 10 to 4 this year in honor of his father, who played quarterback at Notre Dame. It was his father's number with the Fighting Irish. Well, Miami has chosen, with West Virginia having the option, West Virginia chose to receive. Miami elected to take the wind here in the third quarter. So Butch Davis feeling that this is when they need to get it done right now. Coburn the only running back. Play fake for Bulger. Wide open, the fullback, Anthony Green. Penalty flag down, and Green still on his feet at the 33-yard line. Finally shoved out by Mike Rumpf. Let's check out the call. Appears to be against West Virginia. The illegal downfield. So they'll wipe out the 13-yard gain. Don Nealon in his 20th year in Morgantown. He said he broke the cycle in West Virginia. It was either lose and get fired fast or win and go on to a better job. And he broke the cycle. That's right. He's been there for a long time. As you said, 20 years, and he's done a great job. You see his record, winning percentage of 621. So he's done a good job at West Virginia. And I faced him as a player, and uh, you always knew that he was going to prepare his team to win and come out and play hard. So it'll be first and 15 after the penalty. First time the fullback, Anthony Green, had touched the ball today. Double wide receiver to the bottom of the screen. Green and Coburn in the eye behind Bulger. Coburn with the football. Hits the pile and will not go anywhere. He'll lose a yard. Damian Lewis, Nate Webster, Michael Burrow all there for the Miami defense. Well, last, certainly stuffing the run, John, would be a good start for Miami. Well, last week when they played so poorly at Boston College, the defense responded and came back out with two series where they went three plays and out. That's exactly what Butch Davis and Mike Sh or Greg Schiano and this defense wants to do. You see Dan Morgan in the middle of the pile. You see Michael Rump coming in late and putting a hat on the running back, Colburn. But they, that's exactly what they have to do. Come out and go three plays and out and get great field position for the offense. No gain on the play. Second and 15. Bulger with the play fake. Trying to move in the pocket, under pressure, throws complete. That's Coburn at the 20 yard line. Dan Morgan right there to make the tackle. Gain of five, it'll bring up third and 10. John, that time Miami didn't allow Bulger to move outside the tackle box. No, it was just a play action fake and he wanted to go outside, but good positioning on the outside by number 93, Michael Burrow. He did a nice job. Nate Webster comes in the middle of that football field along with Dan Morgan to limit the gain. He'll bring up a third and 10 for the Mountaineers. Credit Webster with the primary tackle. Third and 10, West Virginia. Four wide receiver formation. And movement along the line of scrimmage and that'll cost the Mountaineers five. I love these officials who, when three flags are down, they throw. The, the fourth guy throws a flag. Like, you might like well, nobody saw the first three. You might as well be a, get in and be a part of something. So that'll move it back to the 15 again. Yeah, I love that. They almost feel it's 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 almost their duty to throw the flag, <laughs> even though there's four of them on the field already. Well, this is the type of, of offensive output that West Virginia has been. Uh, been plaguing their production uh, early in this football season. This is what I thought you'd see out of West Virginia. A lot of mental mistakes and mental errors and really stopping themselves early in the ball game. They haven't done that. Third and 15. Miami coming on a blitz. It's picked up. Pass complete to Brown and he's blown up by Mike Rump. Mike Rump just blew him up. Held it to a gain of a yard and a half. And, and Antonio Brown still down. I don't blame him for still being down. That's the second big blow that Michael Rump has laid on Antonio Brown in this football game. Both times Antonio Brown had no idea that Michael Rump was coming from the secondary. This time really catches him off guard, had his back turned as Mo Mark Bolger goes out. Just a quick play to the outside. As soon as he turns up field, you see Mike Rump coming from that cornerback position. Brown had no chance to take this ball up the field. He was coming with a full head of steam and a full sprint towards Antonio Brown. And again, that Antonio Brown is still down on the ground. And earlier in this football game, he, he almost a more of a devastating shot. This time he had his legs tangled underneath him. Looked and like I the think, right ankle collapsed underneath yeah, him. Yeah, and it like might be his under. hip as well. Just a big shot again by the cornerback, the sophomore, Michael Rump. They're working on that right ankle. Antonio Brown, the 5'10", 170 sophomore out of Miami Central High School. 39 catches on the season coming in. 
with one touchdown plus another one on a punt return. 13 minutes exactly to go third quarter. Well, maybe a little emotion out of the Miami defense there, John. And maybe that can get this team fired up. You mentioned Brown from Miami, one of 21 Florida guys on the West Virginia roster. Actually, West Virginia has 21 Floridians, 21 West Virginians, and 26 Pennsylvanians. Antonio Brown being assisted to the West Virginia sideline. It's a punting situation for the Mountaineers, and they're going to be kicking against the wind. Frank, you would think Miami wants to come after the special teams of West Virginia right here. They have them pinned back inside the 20-yard line and try to block a kick here and turn the tide. They've done a good job coming out on the first three plays in defense. Let's see what the special teams can provide. Mark Fazolari to punt. Good snap. Gets the kick away. And toward the West Virginia sideline and out of bounds in West Virginia territory. Let's see where they'll mark it. Linesman on the far side walks to the 44, and that's where they'll spot it. First and 10 for Miami. Hurricanes with 12.45 left to go in the third quarter. They trail it 13-0 to the Mountaineers. We'll be right back. Log on to SportsChannelFlorida.com for the next edition of Sports Chat Live, presented by Bell South. University of Miami running back James Jackson will be online Monday at 8 p.m. to answer your questions about the hurricane season. Log on now for more details, SportsChannelFlorida.com. We've talked about Jekyll and Hyde for Miami. Look throughout the season now so far and the discrepancies in yardage from half to half, not from game to game, but from half to half. And it's just incredible. Ohio State, a 90-yard difference, although they did control the second half of that game. That's the closest thing they've come to putting together 60 minutes. They didn't score in the second half. Fam, you, well, you throw that one out the window. It's a 1-double-A team. The difference in Penn State, the difference at ECU, the difference in Florida State and in Boston College. And, well, we'll see what happens this game. But really, since that Ohio State game, the Hurricanes have yet to put together a solid 60 minutes of football against a Division I opponent. Well, the good thing about, about that stat and about what we've seen in the first 30 minutes is they didn't waste it in the first half, Frank, offensively. They've got, if they've got 30 minutes left, you're going to see it right now with Miami down 13 to nothing. Standard personnel package for the Hurricanes. Wayne and Moss, the wide receivers. Frank's the tight end. McPartland and Jackson, the running backs. Fake to Jackson. Kenny with time. Pass down the middle. Complete to Wayne at the 25. Reggie's still going, looking for a block. And finally, hauled down at the 17-yard line. Rick Sherrod, the safety, made the tackle, but Miami with a big play on first down off the play fake. That's something they desperately needed to do in the first half. You have such talent at the wide receiver position, yet you just saw zero receivers going across the middle on crossing routes. This time, Bubba Franks clears that underneath and allows the wide receiver from right to left, Reggie Wayne, to come across the formation and then use his speed. It wasn't a great throw, but Kenny Kelly found a way to get the football down the field to Reggie Wayne, he stops he for the football, and then he uses his speed. A good block by Santana Moss on the outside to get a couple extra yards. James Jackson with the handoff, breaks in the clear, and a score from 17. It's J.J. every day, all day, all the way. James Jackson, touchdown Hurricane. Wasn't sure if James Jackson was going to find the open room to the right side, but he's kind of stutter steps at about the 15-yard line and then explodes, and no one touches James Jackson in the open field. He looked healthy. He looked 100% on that play, Frank. A great patient run by James Jackson. It gets Miami back in this football game. Andy Crossland on to attempt the extra point. I was about to say that the pass to Wayne was good for 27 yards. And then Jackson from 17. So Miami takes two plays to move in for the touchdown. Andy Crossland's conversion out of Zachary Hart hole is good. And with 12 minutes and 14 seconds left to go third quarter, Miami is back in the game. It's 13 to seven. The drive taking just 31 seconds. Another quick strike by the Miami Hurricanes. Last week they scored two touchdowns in a matter of I think 14 seconds. This time they take all of 31 seconds for James Jackson to find some running room in the middle of that Mountaineer defense. Let's see. McPartland gets a great block on Barrett Green, and then it's all number 21 just finding a hole in the middle of those jerseys. No one touches him. And great blocking up front by Ty Wise and Martin Bibla. Take a look. The middle of your right side. Of your screen a double team block just blows him right out of the middle of the line of scrimmage and Mercier doing a good job Joaquin Gonzalez on the right side also pinning his man to the outside and then James Jackson going up the middle to put the Canes on the scoreboard seventh touchdown of the year for James Jackson rushing the football a look at the junior from Belglave as I said seventh touchdown rushing he also has one receiving 
And now maybe this Orange Bowl crowd will get into it a little more and fire up the Hurricanes. It's 13 to 7. John, as we said, the good thing is poorly as the offense played in the first half. The three turnovers helped keep West Virginia at bay. It was only 13 nothing. And hey, when you've come back from 28 nothing the previous week, this you say 13 nothing. That's easy. <laughs> Uh, we got this wrapped up. I mean, obviously, they got a lot of work to do. They, they have to hold down Bulger. Bulger has been shredding him in the first half. They have no sacks on Bulger, though they do have two interceptions. They've gotten close to sacks a couple of times, particularly on blitzes, and Matt Sweeney almost had him for a safety on the play that resulted in Myers' That's right. interception. Andy Crossland, who's been battling the hip flexor injury and has not been kicking off in recent weeks, kicked off to start the third quarter, and he'll do so again. Interesting that uh, Jesse Olinger, who had been doing the kickoffs for Miami, he's a walk-on here. His brother, John, is a walk-on for the Mountaineers, also a kicker, and also had gotten a chance to kick off because Jay Taylor was battling a hip flexor injury. So a lot of similarities there, although neither brother has gotten into the ball game today. This is huge for Miami to score early in the third quarter, especially as we were talking about the Hurricanes deciding to take the win in the third quarter. If they were going to get back into this football game and win with field position, they needed to do something offensively. They needed to do something defensively, three plays and out. They get instant field position, then two plays later, they score the first touchdown of the ball game. Ball blown off the tee, so Crossan will have to reset it. Lewis Daniels, number nine, and Sean Terry, number 88 will receive for West Virginia. Sean Terry, like his brother Terry, uh, Nate Terry rather, a product of Homestead High in South Miami-Dade County. Andy Crossland, well good. And Andy Crossland, the senior from Dallas, Texas, who missed a 32-yard field goal in the first half. We'll kick it off again. He drives this one again with the wind in his back deep and out of the end zone on the fly. That might be as far as Andy's ever kicked a kick on. First and 10, West Virginia from the 20. Well, again, John, now it's the defense, their turn. You've got to keep this field position and be able to use this win, have West Virginia punt from deep in their territory into a strong win. When you take a look at the defensive players that are on the field now, at least they have a little bit of hop in their step. They're all talking to one another. They're trying to motivate each other, and I think they're in, back into this football game. They, this is a team that plays when their back is, is directly against the wall. As you said last week, coming back from a 28-point deficit, and this week only 13 points, but the crowd's back into it. It looks like the defense is, too. On first down, Bolger with play action. Swings it out. It's fullback Green. Takes a big hit. Chris Campbell held it to a gain of a yard. Oh, Chris Campbell just got all up in his grill, or as The Rock might say, he checked him directly into the SmackDown Hotel. Yeah, it was a great play by Chris Campbell. The linebacker position, the strong side. The fullback out of the backfield doesn't see him coming. You see 49, Anthony Green, and then whack. Out of the secondary, Campbell comes out of nowhere. You see him coming from the inside out. He has a beeline directly to Anthony Green and smacks him down only for a two-yard gain. Second and eight, West Virginia. Three wide receivers in the game. Bulger will throw it. Down the middle, pass is caught by Ivy, and he did a nice job hanging on at the 41-yard line. Marquise Fitzgerald there on the tackle, along with Ed Reed, who stays down. Might have got the wind knocked out of him. Head quickly up and off the field. There's one guy you had to sc stop, Frank, in this West Virginia attack. It's Mo Mark Bolger and the wide receiver and tight end. That's the way that West Virginia is going to stay in this football game to keep the lead and move the football down the field. Bolger's a senior quarterback. He completes a high percentage of his passes, and he looks for his big targets in Cor Corey Ivey on the outside and Anthony Beck, the tight end, on the inside. First and 10 from the Mountaineer 41. Coburn. And down he goes for a loss. And again, it's Chris Campbell who drops him behind the line of scrimmage. Chris Campbell coming on like gangbusters. He had his first start in a Florida State game and played like he was a, a, a inexperienced sophomore. But the last two weeks, he has really stepped his game up. It's the first time all, all afternoon long, the West Virginia offensive line, they're all on the ground, and Miami's running to the football. You can clearly see that on the replay. Take a look at the white jerseys. Everybody's on the ground, and everybody in green is on their feet running to the football. That's great pursuit, and that's great determination by this Hurricane defense. Four wide receivers in for West Virginia. Bulger faking to Coburn. Swings it out, completes to Sean Terry, and he's up near midfield to the 49-yard line. 
Picked up 10. It'll be third and two for the Mountaineers. That's some kind of throw by the quarterback, Mark Bolger. Did a great job of play action. Then he had the big defensive end right in his face, and he actually gets the football up and away, and the defensive end, it looked like Michael Bro couldn't make a play on it, but yet he threw it right on the money on the outside to Terry, who makes the catch and comes up a couple yards short of the first down. Numbers on Bulger, and as you said, a high percentage, 240 yards, and that's as well as he's played this year. Three wideouts in on a third and two. Terry motioning down to the near side. Bulger will throw it over the middle, complete to Terry, dragged down by Mike Ruff, but he picked up four yards and enough to move the chains. That's a nice play by the Mountaineers offense. They bring Terry across the formation in motion. It's man coverage by Miami, so everybody's running from the short side of the field to the wide side, and then all they do is they bring him underneath, almost a little bit of a pick play. You see the tight end coming from left to right. Terry goes underneath him, and there's nothing but Mike Ruff can do is watch him catch the football and secure the tackle. First down, Mountaineers at the Miami 47. 9.26 to go, third quarter. West Virginia leads 13-7. On first down, Bulger will throw it again. Down the middle, complete to Ivy. Ivy inside the 20, and down he goes at the 16-yard line. Rump with the tackle. The pickup of 31. I think Bulger's feeling it more going into the win than with the win. He's able to gauge his throws down the field. Just a simple post pattern. It looked like Mike Rump stopped running there. He wasn't on uh, Ivy, Corey Ivy down the middle of the field. Corey Ivy running at full speed. Mike Rump looked like he was jogging through the coverage and then a dynamite throw down the middle of the football field. Never breaks stride. And thankfully for the Hurricanes, I think Ivy cuts back into Outblades. If he keeps running, it looks like he may score. First and 10, West Virginia just outside the Miami 15. Coburn tries to go outside, runs into Al Blades and William Joseph, and they hold it basically to no gain, maybe a half a yard. Frank, Miami doing a better job in this third quarter defensively of getting off the Mountaineer blocks and really clogging up the running lanes. There's nowhere for Colburn to run the football so far in this third quarter. Really, the only thing hurting the Canes now is they cannot get to Mark Bolger before he throws down the field to his wide receivers. That's what's killing the Canes right now. They're not getting enough pressure with the front four, and it's kind of risky to blitz against a four wideout formation, which West Virginia has in those passing situations. Second and nine. Bulger on the rollout. Under pressure, throwing back the other way for Beck. He makes the catch at the five and dropped at the four. Dan Morgan on the tackle, flagged down on the far side of the field at the 18-yard line. It might be a formation penalty. It looked like Beck is staying down. The big 6'6 senior, 265 pounds. They can desperately can't afford to lose him, and it's actually lining up in the neutral zone. It looked like Miami might have been offsides. Well, the flag was thrown five yards behind the line of scrimmage. And if he were offside, I don't know why he'd throw the flag back there. We will wait and see as they look at Anthony Beck, a big senior tight end out of Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. 21 catches coming into the game for a 12-yard average and three touchdowns. It's a nicely designed play as they roll to the left and throw back to the tight end to the right. Yeah, they had two tight ends set up to the left side. Bolger looking like he's going to break contain, which he's done all afternoon long then Beck makes the one-handed right-handed grab and his right ankle or his left ankle actually gets caught underneath Dan Morgan watch his left ankle get caught underneath Dan Morgan right there oh it bends it back that, that's that's a pretty good one right there Frank it looks like he's going to stay down for quite a while penalty was on Miami and West Virginia will accept the penalty they lose a couple of yards but they save the down Concern right now for West Virginia is Anthony Beck, their big tight end. And West Virginia has used their tight end today. Miami has not. And that's a huge weapon, especially if you have a productive guy. And both of these teams have two tight ends that you desperately want to get into your offense and get in early. Beck come, came into the game with 21 catches for 267 yards. Three touchdowns and a 12.7 yard per catch. And on the flip side of that, you have big Bubba Franks. He came in with 22 catches, and, and his average was right around 10 yards per catch and two touchdowns. So the tight ends for both of these teams, very productive. Just as you said, Frank, you want to use Miami's a little bit more than they have uh, this afternoon. Beck still down. And... Well, you've got to say that it, it didn't look pretty. It 
it could be badly sprained or I hesitate to say even broken the way it, it twisted underneath him. Dan Morgan had that ankle pinned underneath him and they kind of slid towards the sidelines and the ankle was really, really in, in a bad spot. Well, he is putting some weight on it, so that's a good sign. Seems to be walking without much difficulty. Whether he can come back and play, it's a separate question. But I know I've, I've rolled on my ankle, and it, I'll tell you what, for those first 30 seconds, you're in agony. You're in complete <laughs> agony. I'm a baby when it comes to ankle sprains. My ankles aren't very big to begin with. The ball moved to the Miami 5 on the penalty. It'll be second and four. They can get a first down at the one. Eight minutes, ten seconds left to go third quarter. Miami has cut the 13 nothing lead, uh, West Virginia lead to seven, but now the Mountaineers threatening to come back. And Dan Morgan headed toward the locker room also. Well, he's been having hamstring problems all year. He got the ice bag out on maybe something with his left hand, it appears. They're putting ice on his left hand. Here's the run. Coburn around the right side, and Avon Coburn, it's Avon calling for a touchdown, West Virginia. That's one way to answer Miami is to come right back after Miami scores its only touchdown of the game. West Virginia making the score 19 to 7. Colburn outside had some great blocks in front of him. Looks like West Virginia will go for two points on the conversion. But they answer Miami's touchdown with one of their own. Well, they changed their mind. They were going to go for two, and now they send Taylor on to kick the extra point. 19 to 7, West Virginia. Timeout being signaled by the officials. There's another West Virginia Terry player. Terry Dixon, it looked like, big number 72. I think, I believe that's Dixon out there. Yes, it is. Sometimes those seven and twos get stretched so big with those linemen, <laughs> you can't tell who it is. Let's take another look at the touchdown run from Avon Coburn, freshman out of Cherry Hill, New Jersey. You see Terry Dixon out in front trying to throw a block on number 20, Edward Reed, just lunging ahead and actually provided enough room for Avon Colburn to get into the end zone. That really slowed down the pursuit of Nate Webster, and he actually uses his speed to get out to the outside. Beats Chris Campbell to the front pylon, and it's six points for the Mountaineers. Colburn, 16 carries, 66 yards as they work on Dixon's left shoulder. Now, take a look at that replay, John. I don't know if we could see it again from the end zone, but Nate Webster, he looks like he's just kind of it looked like he was just kind of gliding along rather than, you know, what he normally does is shoot through that hole when he, see who has the, when he sees who has the football. And you mentioned Mike Rumpf in the coverage before, just kind of gliding along in the pattern. Watch 52, the middle linebacker. Okay, right there. He's just kind of gliding right there instead of shooting through the gap. I think he's waiting for – he thinks that, that he has outside help with Edward Reed, and he's going to wait for the running back, Colburn, to cut inside. And actually, that was a good play by Terry Dixon. He is such a big body that Nate couldn't come from inside out. And number 20, Edward Reed, was on the ground already. That was a good play by West Virginia. There's Taylor's conversion kick, and it is good. And with 7 minutes, 52 seconds, West Virginia has regained the 13-point lead. It's the Mountaineers 20, Miami 7, 7.52 left to go third quarter. Back with more action on Sports Channel right after this. Join us for a day of golf on January 17, 2000 at the Western Hills Country Club for Hurricanes Golf Classic. For sponsorship opportunities, call the Hurricane Club at 1-800-GO-CANES. Taylor's kickoff to Andre King at the 8. Andre is necktied and flags fly in. Number 19, Boo Sensabaugh, the backup defensive back, just threw a lariat around Andre King. And unlike last week at Boston College when... Uh, one of the defensive backs, and this is going to go against Miami. They pointed against Miami. So, again, mistakes on special teams really hurting the Hurricanes. A hold on the Hurricanes. Just when you thought Miami was going to get a break on special teams, Bruce Sensiball comes in and actually doesn't get the face mask. He just gets him underneath the chin strap and wraps him around, and it looked like the holding... Uh, took place. Shevin Marshall. It looked like Shevin Marshall, number 41. And right there, the push in the back. There's no need for the block either. He was already beaten. The ball goes back to the Miami 18-yard line. First and 10 Hurricanes. Double tight end formation. Jackson the only running back. Fake to Jackson. Kelly flips it to a wide open Will McPartland, and he too is hog tied by Sensabaugh. Let's just say he likes to tackle high. Up at the 24-yard line, it's a pickup of six. Boo Sensabaugh, senior out of Norton, Virginia. 
he keeps that up, he's going to get a face mask penalty. Yeah, it looks like he's getting his tackling lessons from Gary Tompkins. I remember two years ago that he ended up getting uh, one of the Miami players on the sidelines just hogtied him right around the collar, and that's a dangerous tackle for the person that's getting tackled. Second, first down for Miami, the gain out to the 24-yard line. Kelly steps up. Throwing deep for Reggie Wayne, and that ball knocked down by Scooter Davis. Good defensive play by Scooter Davis, cutting inside Reggie Wayne. Nice timing by Scooter Davis. He was just riding number 87, Reggie Wayne, on the post right. You see a nice break of the, on the ball right there. Reggie Wayne has his man, but the ball was just, just a little bit underthrown, and that ball's out in front. Reggie Wayne doesn't have to slow up for the football, but uh, a nice play on the corner by Davis. Second and ten, Hurricanes. From their 24. With the Jackson, with room. Jackson across the 25, up to the 30-yard line. Picks up about six. It'll be third and four. James Davis, backup safety out of Stewart, Florida, number 10, making the tackle. And that's a play by James Jackson. If he's 100%, I think he just runs by James Davis. The uh, backup free safety. Take a look. He stumbles in the hole, and the hole is huge. Right here, looks like James Jackson never gets his feet underneath him, and it allows Davis, number 10, to come in and make the tackle. But if he doesn't stumble, it looks like Bear, uh, Green, number 33, the linebacker, he has to make the tackle, but probably five yards up the field. Under seven minutes to go, third quarter. Third and four, Miami. Kelly out of the shotgun. Kelly under pressure. Kelly on the run. Kenny Kelly will have a first down. Time to get down, son. Bumble. Lost the football. Big scramble at the 38. I think West Virginia has the football, Frank. He didn't take my advice. I said it's time to get down, and he did. Still unpiling it. Well, that was uh, almost shades of Penn State when Kenny Kelly was running for the first down, and he has plenty of yards and doesn't slide. Looks like Miami, Miami has the football. Well, what a break that is. That's a huge break. And that's Looks like Ty thing. Wise on the bottom of the pile got it back. That's one thing you have to learn as a quarterback. Get what you can, and when you, when you can go no farther, get down and protect the football. Kenny Kelly makes a great play at just eluding the Mountaineer defenders, but right here, there's nowhere he's going to go to make another five or ten yards. Just get down with the football. Right hand comes in, a Mountaineer defender strips it, and then somewhere under that pile is number 64, Ty Wise, with the football. Well, that's just awareness. If you've got the first down, you're running on a bum ankle, get down and go back and huddle up. Jackson with the handoff. Jackson with a flag down. This play's going to come back. He picked up 16, but it's going to come back. There's a West Virginia helmet lying on the ground. Ty Wise made a devastating block in the middle of that football field, and I don't know if he's going to get called for the hold, but he had his man, and he was burying him on the 40-yard line around the hash, and that's right where the flag was thrown. Well, this will cost Miami a first down and some big yardage. They would have had it in West Virginia territory. On the offense, 10-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Take another look. Let's watch the middle here. Hard to tell. It looks like yeah. the holdings in the middle of the field on Barrett Green. It may have looked like one of the guards, possibly Martin Bibla. That was the only guy that looked like he had his man and was standing up uh, where, the, where the flag was. But everybody else kind of was on the ground and doing a good job for the interior line of Miami. There are the penalties. Seven penalties for Miami for 53 yards. Four penalties for West Virginia for 19. Moves it back to the 26 where it's first and 22. Kelly with plenty of time. Down the middle to Bubba Franks, who makes an outstanding catch up at the 44-yard line. First time they've gone to Franks today. Chris Edmonds on the tackle, but that's a big gain. It gives Miami a second and about four. Picked up 18. And they make it tough on the big fella, too. They only go to him one time today, and they make him up the, go up the middle and go up to the football. Watch his one-handed grab. The left palm just goes right up, pins it on his helmet, and then... Really holds on to the football. Looks Chris Edmonds, number 41, was trying to strip the football. Watch his big catch and watch 41 come and tries to strip the football, but Bubba is too strong. He puts it away for the Canes. Second and four, Miami, from the 44. Jackson. Jackson through the hole and has a first down at midfield. 
Ryan Brady, number 43, along with Barrett Green, number 33, making the tackle for West Virginia. Give Jackson six, and the Hurricanes will move the chains with 5.08 left to go third quarter. Nice patience by Jackson. Waits for Richard Mercier, the pulling offensive left guard, to get out in front of him. They moved the chains when you thought Miami was going backwards with a couple of penalties. But look, Franks makes a big catch over the middle, and you see James Jackson, his number, 70 yards on 15 attempts, 4.7 average, and one score. From midfield. Hurricanes with the double tight end. Take to Jackson. Kelly on the rollout. And short hops it into Reggie Wayne. Tough throw going to your left when you're on a bad angle, John. Yeah, that's a tough pass, but he had his receiver open down the middle. I'd like to see them on first down. If they're going to break contain, that's fine. Maybe make an easier pass for Kenny, but the wide receiver's coming over the middle, or Bubba Frank's down the middle on first down. Uh, a couple plays ago, Reggie Wayne was wide open down the middle. He makes a big catch, and you see Bubba Frank's uh, last play comes in and makes a big catch down the middle. So I'd like to see the wide receivers more involved on Second first down, down off ball. the play action. Double tight end again for the Hurricanes. Boss, the only wide receiver in the ball game. Blitz coming. Miami picks it up. Oh, no. Intercepted by Bastine. Herlo Bastine bringing it back and tripped up and a flag down. Kenny Kelly made the tackle with the, the Miami 40. Well, Kenny just has not been sharp most of today, John. Just hasn't been there. No, he hasn't had his A game, but that ball was thrown right to Bastine, number three. Looked like a quick slant with the tight end going out in the flat. West Virginia will get called with the clip, but that's after the interception, I do believe, Frank. That's correct. West Virginia will have the football. Perlo Bastine coming up with his fourth interception of the season. Let's take another look at the INT. Yeah, just really right behind Santana Moss. The play was going to the inside. Moss already on the inside. Bastine was to the outside. Kenny Kelly makes the, the tackle. We'll see if we can take a look. You see number 11, Tompkins, coming in on the blitz. The backers were outside. And really, Santana Moss looked like he was open to the middle of the football field. The ball was just yeah, it was four yards behind, behind him. him. It's four yards behind him. First down, West Virginia at the 38. Cooper Rigo. Rigo skips to the outside. Leonard Myers making the tackle at the 44-yard line. That's a gain of six. 4.24 left to go third quarter. It's starting to look bleak for Miami. They're down 20-7. to seven And really no rhythm offensively with the exception of one series today. And that was set up by the defense uh, going three plays and out and getting great field position because the wind is so brisk coming from the east. Miami got the field position they uh, and, and took advantage of it. Three wide receivers in as West Virginia tries to spread the Canes out. Again, all kinds of time for Bulger. Now being chased. This gets oh, yeah. intercepted by Mike Rump. And that's a poor decision by Mark Bulger. Mike Rump, his second interception. So he gives it and he takes it away. And looks like a West Virginia player down. It is Bulger back at the 23-yard line. And that's something you don't think the senior quarterback's going to do. It looked like he was just going to wind up and throw it into the West Virginia bench but actually threw it right into the hands of Mike Rump. Good coverage down the field for the Canes. Bolger had plenty of time back there to move around and throw the football away. You see the play action, wants to go down the field, then eludes the pocket, goes to the left. Right here you think he's just going to load up and throw it out of bounds, but he actually threw it for his receiver to try to make a play down the football field, number 80 it looked like on the, on the reception, but Mike Rump's the only guy that makes a play on the football. He was aware and it got it close. That's a ball that should never be thrown, Frank. No, no way. You, Bulger is a smarter quarterback than this. But you look at his numbers this year, and coming into the game, John, I think he had five touchdowns and eight interceptions. Exactly right. Five, and five, inter five touchdowns, eight interceptions, and that's just a bad play, and it looked like possibly, Frank, he might be cramping up didn't look like he had an injury. He's holding his yeah, left holding calf. calf. So that appeared to be a cramp. but uh... He had a brain cramp on the play <laughs> just before that, though, throwing it down the football field. That should never happen. Ladies and gentlemen, John Congemi tells it like it is when it comes to quarterbacks. Well, I, I've done that. I've had plenty of those in my heyday. And, and you see Don Neal saying, hey, John Congemi used to throw those to us. What about uh, why are you throwing That's it That's right. To he was guys? the coach at West Virginia That's when you right. played in Pittsburgh. That's right. There's Bulger's numbers today, certainly impressive percentage-wise, and, and the yardage of the three interceptions will have Don Nealon scratching his head. But why are you throwing that ball? Just throw it out of bounds. There, see, see the motion he made with his hand? Just <laughs> throw it away. That's right. Just, just throw it. it away. 
Let us line up again. Don't give it back to him. And there's Mike Rump. You see his second interception this season. Actually, his third is second today. He had second one in the today. Ohio State game. So that is his third, and that leads the ball club. Well, Miami's got to get something done offensively now, John, with 3.52 left to go. Kenny Kelly remains in the game at quarterback. Where is the Hurricane running game today? You know what other thing I find amazing? is last game against Boston College, Miami had one holding penalty call. Today they've had one holding penalty. Neither BC or West Virginia has been flagged for holding in the last almost seven quarters. That's astounding to me that a team, a defensive team can go seven quarters without either forcing a holding penalty or having the officials ignore it. What's more amazing, West Virginia has four turnovers. Miami only has one, and West Virginia is leading this game 20 to seven. Well, the Miami offense just hasn't been able to take advantage of the good field position when they've had it. And two of the turnovers came inside the 10-yard line on first down. Break, break, Kelly, break, break. complete to Franks. There's the man, double snowman, number 88. Takes it for a gain of 14 Kelly. to the West Virginia 38. What Kenny has the to Bubba understand Bubba. is when Bubba Franks is going from the left side of the field to the right side, he's going to get there, but he just has to be a little patient. He's running through the linebackers, and you see his numbers on the season. Bubba has three catches today, but you have to be more patient with him going from right to left. Take a look, right side of your screen. He's going through these linebackers. Kenny's ready to throw the football down the field, but he hung, and he had enough patience in the pocket to let Bubba run his route, get it to the outside, and move the chains. Scooter Davis had to make tackle. Gain was 14. First down Gaines at the Mountaineer 38. Jackson on the trap play. Jackson will get a couple of yards as really Fulcher missed the trap block and again Mondral Fulcher having all kinds of problems blocking from that fullback spot. David Carter made the tackle number seven. And that should be an easy block for Mondrell Fulcher. He's coming from one side of the formation to the other, which means the defensive end's really not going to see him till the last minute. And it looks like Mondrell's almost closing his eyes or ducking his head. He's missing the block completely. He's whiffing on it. Second and eight, Miami. Moss and Wayne both set to the bottom of your screen. Frank's the tight end. To the right of the formation. West Virginia a little bit confused on the snap. Kelly, plenty of time. To Franks inside the 20 to the 13-yard line. David Carter had the coverage, but could not prevent the completion. Well, Frank, at halftime, you asked me where Double Snowman was hiding, and you wanted to see him get the football. Well, he's getting a dose of it in this third quarter. Kenny Kelly found his go-to guy, big number 88, Bubba Franks, who mentioned in the open the tight ends would be a big part of this football game. Kenny Kelly just shuffling to his right and then throws a strike over number seven. It looked like on the defense for West Virginia, they do a good job of hanging in the pocket. The offensive line, credit the protection and credit Kenny Kelly just sliding to his right and throws a strike to Bubba Franks. Now the officials signal their timeout. There may be a problem with the clock or the play clock. Kelly, uh, Daniel Franks, as we call him, Bubba, three catches, 55 yards. I call him the double snowman for that two double eight on his jersey. And that's the guy I always look to. John, you and I have been rather vocal on some of these broadcasts about Franks getting more of the football, and this year he finally is. His 21 catches coming into the game exceeds his total from all of last year when we felt he was underutilized. Well, he's a big part of this football game and a big part of this offense, and you got to get him involved early and often, and that's what Miami's trying to do in this third quarter. 227 left to go in the third. Canes trail at 20 to 7. First down from the West Virginia 13. Double tight end for the Canes. Portis to Jackson, rather Portis, putting Portis to the 10-yard line. Pick up a three. Greg Robinette, number 99, in on the tackle. Bring up a second and seven. Hey John, that's the situation, first down in the red zone, where I like to see play action. Well, it's a good opportunity to do that, but that time there was a big hole. I was surprised Portis didn't get more out of that than he did, but, you know, play action to Bubba Franks is a good call in that, in that spot anytime. Second down and seven for the Hurricanes. Both wide receivers to the bottom of the screen. Kelly gives to Portis. Again, there was a hole to start with, but it closed up pretty quickly. He got two. Who sends the ball there, but the primary tackler, number 48, Mark Thurston. Big 6'3", 255, sophomore out of Miami High School. Well, Frank, you make a good point. You know, you get down here by throwing the football, and then on consecutive downs, they kind of run it up the gut or off tackle and don't get much. They get about five yards and two carries. It is tougher to throw the football the closer you get to the end zone, but I think you have to utilize 
your, your wide receivers and your tight end and your play action a little bit more on first and second down. Just one wide receiver in. It's Reggie Wayne to the top of the screen on this third and five. Look for Kenny to play fake and break contain. That's a good block. Flipping it to the end zone for the first touchdown. Well, Kenny had his choice there. He had McPartland at the short flat, and Frank's on the uh, high side. It's that high-low, John, that Miami loves to run. Yeah, it's a great play down inside the plus zone, inside the 20. Kenny Kelly, his last four receptions, or his last four pass completions, all by Bubba Franks. None bigger than that one. Kenny Kelly throws a strike to the back corner of the end zone, and a tired Bubba Franks. You see him with a couple hands on the hips. He makes the touchdown reception and puts the Canes back into the game, 20-13. to 13. Third touchdown catch of the year for Bubba Franks. Kenny Kelly talking it over with Butch Davis as Andy Crossland in to attempt the conversion out of the Zach Hart hold. And the kick is up and is good. And with 51 seconds left to go in the third, it's back to a six-point lead. West Virginia 20, Miami 14. So Butch Davis' decision to take the win in this third quarter, John, appears to have paid off. Really does. Reggie Wayne comes down and tries to open up the outside with his motion. Kenny Kelly just drifting to his right. Had an open Bubba Franks on Gary Thompson, the Miami native. But you see Bubba a little excited about getting into the end zone. Kenny does a nice job just retreating from the line of scrimmage. He's had McPartland short, Bubba deep, and does a nice job of, of taking the football. You have to credit James Jackson with the block also as well. After the play action, watch 21 come in and cut the linebacker. You see there does a great job of getting him upended. And then just a pass to the corner of the end zone. Looked like he got the block on Lake, number 87, the defensive end for the Mountaineers. And Bubba Franks gets some Gatorade. Gets some, you know, I'll take two of those. I had a good series that time. The scoring drive, six plays, 52 yards. Took three minutes and one section. One second. And Franks had three receptions on the drive for 45 yards. Puts him up to 24 catches on the year. And now three touchdowns. So the offense converting there after the Mike Rump interception, the turnover which put set Miami up on their own 48-yard line, and they went, as you mentioned, John, 52 yards. And Andy Crossland will kick it off with the win. So hopefully the Miami defense will be able to pin West Virginia back and at least uh, get them to kick before this third quarter is over into a win. Good look at Andy Crossland, the senior out of Dallas, Texas. That's had a very up and down career at UMS, take a lot of public criticism. Uh, last week, of course, the game winning field goal for the first time ever. Dan Morgan coming back onto the Miami sideline with his left hand wrapped up. So we'll see if he gets back in on this defensive series. High pooch kick, trying to get West Virginia to make a mistake. Sean Terry at his 20. Burst through a hole. Sean Terry up across the 40 to the 44 yard line. I don't understand that, John. I really don't. And a Miami Hurricane down. It appears to be Marquise Fitzgerald exactly at the 24 yard line. But with the wind at your back, Kick it why out of the end pooch zone. it short? I don't know. Now you've given West Virginia great field position. I guess they were trying to get West Virginia to make a mistake, trying to kick it to one of the up guys, but he didn't kick it short enough to where the up guy had to handle it. Oh, Marquise took a shot to the head there. And a great return there by Terry, number 88. Takes it right up the Miami sideline down the right side of the football field. And you can see an intentional pooch kick. And I, I take my chances with my defense going three and out. To return the football. Now that sounds good after the play is over, but I think I would have done that before well, the play. Well, I was saying before, you, you know, hope the Miami defense pins them and get them to punt before I, the quarter's I over. agree with you, Frank, because you've got 42 seconds left to go. If you can go three plays and out, you might even consider using a timeout to make them punt into the win. There's 42 seconds left to go in the third quarter. West Virginia leading 20 to 14. Let's take one more look at the hit from one of the blockers on Marquise Fitzgerald. Right side of the screen, right, boom, there. Looked like Corey McIntyre, a backup linebacker, came in and just drilled Marquise Fitzgerald. Marquise is up, but that's a forearm shiver right to the grill. You see number 27 Fitzgerald bouncing off the field now. He ran off under his own power, but that was a big hit by the special teams of West Virginia. And he said, hey, Mick, I, need, I need some smelling salts around here. First down Mountaineers at their There's 44 one. with good field position. I just say, hey, you got the win. Kick it out of the end zone. You don't take your chances. Bulger on the rollout, under pressure. 
Throws to his fullback Plants, complete into Miami territory, and he's run out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Picked up seven on first down. Big Clint Hurt, number 99, out there following the fullback, made the tackle. You can see Miami's tried to make the adjustment of not letting Mark Bolger get the corner with such ease as he did in the first quarter, or the first half. You see Clint Hurt, number 99, you mentioned chasing down the tackle, but they're doing a better job on the corners, not letting Mark Bolger have the corner with no one in his face to throw the football down the field. Second and three for the Mountaineers. Ball just inside Miami territory. Coburn with the football and a little bit of a hole to the Miami 45. Michael Burrow and Damian Lewis combining on the tackle, but that is enough for a West Virginia first down. And that should be the last play. Uh, well, they have 30 seconds left, so they will have to run one more play, moving the chains. The clock will stop, but Miami will not have that uh, wind in the fourth quarter at their back. They'll have to play good defense and win with special teams in field position. Marquise Fitzgerald back in the ball game after that apparent knockout shot, but he's back in there right now in the Hurricane defense, number 27, sophomore out of St. Petersburg. Three wide receivers in for West Virginia on a first and 10, and Bulger out of the shotgun from the Hurricane 45. Bulger with some time to the hash mark. That's complete to Sean Burton, his backup tight end. Dan Morgan there on the tackle along with Leonard Myers. Pickup was a little over four yards. And that is the end of the third quarter from the Orange Bowl. We'll go to the final 15 minutes. It's West Virginia 20, Miami 14. Back with the fourth quarter from the OB right after this on Sports Channel. Back at the Orange Bowl, 20 to 14, West Virginia, 15 minutes to go. Mountaineers have it second and six at the Miami 41 yard line. John, go back to the kickoff after the last Miami touchdown where Miami tries the pooch kick. We just failed to see the wisdom in that because with the win, the ball is going to get to the return guys. You, if you're going to pooch kick, you pooch kick into the wind because it's going to bring the ball back toward your guys who are covering the kickoff. And if it hits the ground, you got a better chance to recover. Well, I think your defense is playing well enough, too, that you want to give them no opportunity to return the football. You had about 42 seconds left to go before ha uh, the fourth quarter. And if you can go three plays and out, you might even consider using a timeout to pin West Virginia back. And if you get the ball around midfield, that's terrific. doesn't matter which way you're going. But now West Virginia... Uh, you know, has the ball right around the 40-yard line, and, and Butch Davis has something to contemplate in the fourth quarter. They're down by six. You see stats through three quarters. Rushing yards pretty even, but uh, total yards uh, totally in the favor of West Virginia. 365 passing yards. Miami only with 177. West Virginia 291. And you see the turnovers, four to one, but two of those turnovers, Miami could have put the football into the end zone, did not take advantage of them. They scored after one Mike Rumpf interception, but after, you go back to the first half after the Myers interception at the West Virginia 12, and they got no points out of it. Today's attendance, 30,310 at the Orange Bowl, and we're ready to go here in the fourth quarter. Miami defense has to come up with a stop here. They're against the wind in the fourth quarter, Miami is. And a look at Mark Bolger, who has three wideouts in his formation, and this second and six with Avon Coburn, the running back. Coburn with the football. Coburn will get about three. Nate Webster and Michael Burrow on the tackle will bring up third and two. Frank, if you're Miami right now, you have to be aware on the defensive front. Bolger's been had a penchant for drawing them off sides in the first half. You have to be aware of not drawing off sides, not staying on side. Watch the football, especially the down guys that are over the ball. Third and two. West Virginia sends two wideouts to the bottom of the screen. Eye in the backfield. Coburn runs into his own blocker and he'll go down for a loss. Edward Reed dropped him for a three-yard loss because the defensive line just surged forward and sent the West Virginia offensive line back into his face. Terry Dixon simply got shoved back. Well, there was a lot of white jerseys going backwards, and that Miami defense came up big. Watch the, the surge of this defensive line. They pushed the center way back. It looked like big number 72. Terry Dixon was wearing the wrong color jersey. He absolutely tackled his own guy about four yards deep in the backfield. Miami and punt safe. Do not jump offside here. Azulari will aim for the far sideline. Sends it inside the 10 and into the end zone. So a good break there for Miami. And that'll bring out to the 20-yard line. Miami will have it first and 10 from their 20. 13.45 left to go. Butch Davis's Canes trail it by six. 
a part of Saturday Morning Playbook on Sports Channel Florida. The lineup includes Saturday Morning College Kickoff at 10 with hosts Frank Franchi, Brady Ackerman, and Terry Norville. The Jim Levitt Show is at 11, followed by the Butch Davis Show with that guy Frank Fort. And the Big Ten, yeah. And the Big Ten Game of the Week at 12. It's all right here on Sports Channel Florida. James Jackson of the Hurricanes walking around on the sidelines, and he does not have his helmet on. He's been stretching his lower back and being checked by the trainers. He's jogging a little bit, but Clinton Portis in the game of tailback right now. And, of course, with Jared Payton back in Chicago, Miami really down to two scholarship tailbacks. They do have another one in Daryl Williams, who's a walk-on. You see Jackson with 72 yards today, but right now it's Clinton Portis in the game. Miami first and 10 from their 20. Standard personnel package for Miami. Portis with the football. Portis, Thomas and hanging on to it, gets four yards. 43, Ryan Brady, and 34, Corey McIntyre combining on the tackle. John, we've seen this against East Carolina when Portis had the big 140-yard-plus game. The coaches said if, if he'd have been a little more experienced, he probably could have broken a couple, but he's really conscious of covering the football and hanging on and not turning it over, and it probably cost him a few yards, but... You know, clearly it's hard to criticize the guy for hanging That's onto right. the football and not wanting to turn it over. Second and six Hurricanes. Double tight end in now. Franks and Fulcher. Fake to Portis. Kenny on the run. Throws it downfield. Complete to Andre King. His first catch of the day at the Miami 39-yard line. That is plenty for a first down. That was a great job by Kenny Kelly and great timing by Andre King. The key to that play was Kenny Kelly threatened the line of scrimmage. The defense didn't know if he was going to throw the football or pass the football. Watch Kenny. He picks up speed like he's going to tuck. That makes a linebacker commit, and it opens up the passing lane on the outside. Gary Tompkins has to go off into the flat, and Bastion, number, number three, the cornerback, looking deep. A great break off of the play of the route by number 84, Andre King. Ball just shy of the Miami 40-yard line. Double tight end again for the Hurricanes. To try and pound it with Portis. Portis slices through, almost lost the football, and picks up nine. Corey McIntyre, the middle linebacker, taking the tackle. One of the Mountaineers tried to strip the football and almost got it to come loose. Let's take another look at that run and watch Portis just hanging on. Nice, strong run by the freshman tailback. A good cut on the inside. You see the football trying to get stripped by Rick Sherrod, number 27, but he was strong enough, was Portis, to hang on to the football. You see his season statistics. 172 yards on 39 rushes, a 4.4 average, and three touchdowns for the freshman running back. 12.29 to go, fourth quarter. Miami down six, first and 10 from their 49. Again, double tight end, both to the left side of the formation. Kelly with play action. Plenty of time, down the sideline, caught by Wayne at the 25. Scooter Davis had the coverage, but he was well off Reggie Wayne. Scooter Davis was running in circles in the mind in the uh, Mountaineer secondary around the 20 yard line. Just a great route in and out, a corner route by Reggie Wayne. First, the, the play action by Kenny Kelly, and Reggie Wayne breaks to the inside. And you see Scooter Davis way on the inside of the numbers. Watch the ISO on the outside. First, he'll make a move to the post for Wayne, and then Scooter turns at the same time, doesn't wheel around quick enough, and it's an easy pitch and catch for the Hurricane offense. 27 yards on the completion of Reggie Wayne. First down, Canes at the West Virginia 24. Again with the double tight end. This is Portis. Portis gets five, six, seven yards before he's tripped up by Gary Tompkins. Well, now the Miami offensive line taking a little bit of control on the running attack. A lot of white jerseys on the ground for the Mountaineer defense. And Portis, a lot of running room right up the gut of the Mountaineer defensive front. Kenny Kelly, by the way, 8 of 11 this half for 139 yards, one interception, one touchdown. Great job by Wise and, and some of the guys up front, 56. You also see Eric Schnupp in the football game for the Hurricanes up front doing a nice job providing running room for Clinton Portis, 33 yards on the afternoon. Again, Miami with that double tight end. And again, Portis has the football and has a crease. Portis inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line. Now having a four first down. Rick Sherrod, the safety, in on the tackle for West Virginia. But again, Miami moves the chains with 11.31 left to go fourth quarter. I think that time if Portis would have stayed with his instincts, he had a clear cutback lane to the left side, back up in the middle of the football field. You can't criticize the young freshman running back. He's running tough in there, getting first downs, but I think that's a play. And, and to your point, Frank, earlier that James Jackson cuts back and may go out of the end zone. Next year, Portis scores on that play. Yeah. When he's got more experience and more confidence. As it is, it's first down at the 13-yard line. Double tight end still for Miami. Portis again. Mercier out in front. Got a good block. Portis to the 10. Still on his feet and down to the 9-yard line is Chris Edmonds. 
made the stop for West Virginia. Gain of four. Under 11 minutes now in the fourth quarter and counting. West Virginia leading 20 to 14. Don Nealon's team up 13 nothing at halftime. Look at Clint Portis, the true freshman out of Gainesville, Florida. Had a huge game at East Carolina with 140 plus yards. That's been his only extended action of the year. Did play some against FAMU in the second half. But now seeing real important playing time. On second down, the fake to Portis. Kelly, oh, you can't take a sack there. You've got to throw it away. And he's got a guy wide open. It's come to France, and he's going to score. How did Kenny Kelly get away? He got away from Antoine Lake, and Clinton Portis got the touchdown pass. Excuse me. Clinton Portis with the touchdown. Frank, I think you scared him. Oh, my you, goodness. You can't take a sack. He said, you know what? You're right. I'm not going to. Oh. He backed away from it. Did a great job finding Clinton Portis, the freshman tailback. He gets his first catching or reception for a touchdown for the year, but he wanted to go to Bubba Franks to the short side. Kenny Kelly, that's what you get with a Kenny Kelly, especially when he's closer to 100%. He'll loot somebody and make a big play. Extra point from Crossland. It is up and it is good. And for the first time today, Miami has the lead with 10 minutes and 17 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. It's the Hurricanes 21, West Virginia 20. We'll be back from the Orange Bowl after this. Look at Clinton Portis, his first ever touchdown reception at the University of Miami. Let's take another look. As, I don't know. John, you said I scared Kenny Kelly. Somehow he kept this <laughs> play alive. I think he did. It was a play action. They wanted to go to Bubba Franks to the short side. They had Mondrell Fulcher trailing him to the backside. But you see right there, they can't contain Kenny Kelly. They can't bring him down. And Clinton Portis, I don't know, he was just moving outside after his play action fake, trying to get a good view of what would happen out there. But you see 87, Antoine, Antoine Lake. Could not contain Kenny Kelly, and he throws. He finds Clinton Portis all the way past the numbers. Also had McPartland out there. Take your pick, but Portis goes in for the Kane score. Hey, I want to tell you something. The Rock was here today. I got to tell you something. Kenny Kelly is no Rudy Poo quarterback. He's got <laughs> some right. strength. And he stiff-armed Antoine Lake and kept the play alive. That's no Rudy Poo quarterback out there. It's amazing that he got away from Lake because Lake, all he had to do was bring Kenny Kelly down for a big play for the Mountaineer defense. You see the scoring drive, eight plays. 80 yards for this Hurricane team. Portis takes the nine-yard TD reception. Kenny Kelly on the series, three for three for 46 yards. Kenny Kelly inaccurate in the first half, and we were critical of him, but another gutty effort so far. Now Crossing will try to kick it deep into the wind. Directional kick to Daniels at the seven and stumbles up across the 15-yard line where Aaron Mosier makes sure he stays down. And that's where West Virginia will start first and ten. That was almost an automatic deep pooch kick. Did you see Daniels? He never could get underneath the foot. Exactly. That's what I'm saying before. Yeah. You, if you're going to pooch kick, you pooch into the wind. Here's the total yards today. And a continuation of last week. 119 yards in the first half, Miami. 212 here in the second. And we have 10 minutes and 10 seconds to play. And you take a look at that, those statistics, Frank. You know, you, against BC, you can do that. You know, and against maybe a West Virginia team that's not a West Virginia team that's been dominant, but there's going to be one team down the road at Virginia Tech you're not going to be able to do this to is play one half of football. Let's hope that Miami can get out of this game with a victory still getting away with 30 minutes of football. West Virginia, four wide receivers in the game. Shevin Marshall in a middle linebacker for Miami. Bolger with the blitz coming and whistle sound. No play, no play. I think the 25 second clock expired, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there's a flag way back at the 40 yard line. Prior to the snap, delay of game, half time, Well, that'll cost the Mountaineers five. And Miami was coming on the blitz on that first down, John. Yeah, they were coming at, at Bolger. They know the only way they can get beat now is if Bolger makes big plays out to Corey Ivey and Antonio Brown to the outside, the big tight end, Anthony Beck has been injured uh, with an ankle injury, and I do not see him in the ballgame. They have four wide receivers in now for the Mountaineers. First and 15. Bulger, three-step drop. Now he's going to run it. Bulger slides down at the 18-yard line, so he gets back the penalty yardage. It'll be second and 10. It's the first time he's really had to run today, John. Yeah, and really no other choice but to run the football. Had a three-step drop, wanted to take the football to the wide side. 
nobody there. And on the you see there on the Miami sideline, I believe that's Art Kehoe and, and company trying to organize the offensive line. He does a great job with that offensive line. It's really important that the guys come to the sidelines with some input so the coaches can coach. Second and 10, West Virginia at their 18. Delay, give to Coburn, and he is going to go nowhere. Sort of that, I'll call it a half Statue of Liberty play that they use very well with Amos Zeroway, but it looked like Al Blades read that one perfectly. And there no longer is the Miami defensive front getting pushed around, and this defense is into the football game. I think they picked up their intensity quite a bit. You see the white jerseys of West Virginia, their offensive line, or everybody's getting stood up and nobody's moving anywhere. The Miami defensive front trying to take control of this football game with nine minutes left to go. Third and ten. Blitz coming. Bulger moving out of the pocket, throwing downfield complete. But it's really shy of a first down as Marquise Fitzgerald knocks the wide receiver out of bounds. Catch was made by Ivy, but shy of the first. Great defensive stand by this Kane defense. Three plays and out after they go 80 yards to score a touchdown to take the lead for the first time in the game. The defense answers, and they come with pressure on third down. Yeah, they brought two safeties. They brought Blades and Reed, along with Dan Morgan, who was back in the ballgame despite that left-hand injury. Frank, this might be a great opportunity with the win at their back. This punt may travel far enough that Santana Moss may be able to make a big play on special team. Fazolari, low line drive. This is returnable. Moss at his 34. Santana looking for a block. To the outside, Santana Moss in West Virginia territory. Cuts across the grain, flag down back at midfield, and Moss now at the 28 yard line. But this is going to come back to Miami territory. Well, that's unfortunate. But it's going to come back to about the Miami 40 yard line. Here's Dennis Hennigan with the call. John, you called it. it. If you outkick your coverage, you're giving Santana Moss a chance to really run one back. And Taylor, or Fazolari rather, hit a low line drive, and Santana made a great return, but a flag at midfield. Well, great job. He eludes the pressure in the beginning. He eludes the first man, and then he uses his athletic ability. Great blocks on that special teams. Watch the spin move out here. Santana gives the high step on the outside. Watch the spin move right here. He eludes a couple more tacklers and almost is gone. Just a shoestring tackle. Keep Santana Moss out of the end zone, but it all comes back for a holding call. First and 10 for the Canes on their own 40-yard line. And John, it looked like the guy throwing the block, as soon as he started to throw the block, the defender turned his back as Santana made his cut. First down from the 40, double tight end Miami. Fake to Portis. Kelly completes to McCartland, his fullback, who falls up at the 46-yard line. Good play on first down, though, picks up six and keeps the clock moving with 8.23. Kenny Wood just checked it down to his outlet receiver. He had Andre King streaking down the near sideline, and he found McPartland in the short side. Kenny Kelly, if you don't have something against this brisk win early, you might. that was a smart move to dump the football off and keep the clock running with 8.06 and counting. Miami up by one. Second and a long four. King staying with the double tight end. Flag down. Portis through the hole will get four. Sensabaugh making the tackle, but it looked like West Virginia was in the neutral zone, John. Yeah, it may have been Chris Edmonds on the outside, the linebacker on the end of the line of scrimmage. Looked like he was in the neutral zone as the ball was snapped. Well, you heard it offsetting penalties, so that play never happened. We'll go into a time warp and go back to second That's and four. Right. Total yardage. That's been a turnaround, much like last week at Boston College. Butch must be, uh, he needs a shot of water right now because I'll tell you this what, is he needs tough more to than take. water in that this thing. This is tough to take on the sidelines being a coach of a team that has just been so up and down, and it, and it happens in such a quick instance from first half to second half in the last two weeks. West Virginia calls a timeout. That is their first timeout of the half. That is their first of this second half. Seven minutes, 40 seconds left to go. We'll look at Kenny Kelly, Martin Bibble, and the rest of the offense. We're going to take a timeout with 7.40 remaining fourth quarter. Miami hanging on to a 21-20 lead over West Virginia. Join the
the Broward Hurricane Club for hurricane watch parties throughout the football season. Join other Hurricane fans and alumni at Arena Sports Bar, 1135 North Federal Highway in Fort Lauderdale, and cheer on the Hurricanes. For more information, contact Paul Miller at 561-241-0823. West Virginia spending a timeout, 7 minutes, 40 seconds left to go, second and four Hurricanes. Ball just past their own 45-yard line. Miami stays with that double tight end formation. Both tight ends, Franks and Fulcher to the left. Give us to Portis. Portis could not get around Chris Edmonds, and that's a loss. Lost a couple of yards. It'll bring up third and almost eight. Yeah, Frank, it almost looked like Chris Edmonds was blocked into the running back, Clinton Portis, on that play. It looked like Joaquin Gonzalez was trying to get the corner, and instead of trying to knock him inside of the pile, knock him outside right into the running lane of Clinton Portis. Now it brings up a big third down conversion for Miami, third and eight. And Miami wants a timeout as the play clock was at 19, but I'm not sure they had the right personnel in the game. I'm not sure they had the right personnel package that they wanted. So Kenny Kelly will walk to the sideline. Seven minutes, 10 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. And well, for the second week in a row, it's been kind of a wild one, John. Well, it's been kind of a dead first half for Miami. If you're, if you're a Miami fan looking at the football game, you can't figure out why they've been so ineffective offensively and pushed around defensively and then they come out in the second half and are totally dominant on both sides of the football defensively they picked up their intensity i think that's what they've been lacking and it's it's hard to put your finger on it and only the head coach and only that coaching staff can really know the pulse of your football team and in the beginning of the game last week and this week as you take a look at kenny kelly's numbers they just didn't come out with emotion and i think that's the biggest part uh, of a coaching staff they have to read that and try to find a way to get your players up to, to play and butch davis if he could figure it out would have figured it out earlier than in both halves of the football game you know, i watched miami come on the field beforehand and there's you know the stadium's all half full and I, I, i'm not a believer in false emotion but i do think that you can read something in the body language and you didn't see the hurricanes jumping on uh, down on each other and slapping helmets there was a couple of low fives and high fives maybe exchanged but it just didn't seem like they were really into being out here for a 12 noon kickoff or something it, their body language didn't seem right to me but they do have a, a one-point lead and now a big third and eight kelly steps up into the pocket delivers high and caught by number franks wow what a catch inside wow. the west virginia 46 yard line that's the man of the game right there bubba franks big double snowman you see number 88 just goes up the ladder and catches the football kenny kelly was high early in this football game and here he's high again, but Bubba Franks really makes a sensational catch, bats it down with his left hand first, enough to control the football, and then regains his composure to catch it with both hands coming down. Look at that. He just sets the football up and then takes it down to the ground, and a big first down for the Canes with the clock moving at 7.03. I'll say one thing. It's a good thing Bubba's 6'6". Six, six. That's right. 6'5", six, he doesn't make that good. No way. Double tight end again for Miami. Portis just squeezing the football. Oh, he's a fake to Portis going deep for Moss. And that ball is incomplete at the goal line. Great fake by Kenny Kelly. Fool me. Scooter Davis had the coverage. That was the same play they wanted to run on first down the, the last time they had the football. They hit McPartland. Or actually, it was on this same series. They hit McPartland on the sidelines. Last time they had Andre King streaking down the field. This time, the big playmaker, Santana Moss, going down. And good coverage on the outside, but a good play by Miami trying to take a shot at a quick score. Clock stop with 6.56 to go. First incompletion in the last nine attempts for Kenny Kelly. Now second and ten, still the double tight end formation. Andre King, the only wide receiver. Get to Portis. Portis down across the 45 to the 43-yard line. Who sends the ball on the tackle for Miami as Martin Bibla and Greg Robinette exchange shoves after the game. Frank, it always looks like Clinton Portis is one tackle away or one one step away from making a big play and that on that play the mountaineer defense came with pressure they had just about nine guys up at the line of scrimmage and don nealon trying to make a play defensively bringing pressure and clinton portis is one step away you see the guys coming onto the line of scrimmage when he cuts it back he's just one crease away from taking it down the field canes back to the standard personnel package two wide receivers wayne and king king to the top of the screen on a third and six Blitz coming. Kelly has Wayne open at the 25, but overthrew him, and he took a big hit. David Carter in there on the blitz. Scooter Davis had the coverage. Yeah, big-time pressure in the face of Kenny Kelly that time. Couldn't hold on to the football. 
any longer. Just tried to make a great timing route to the outside, but overshot his receiver. Credit the Mountaineer defense that time for coming with pressure from the weak side. One thing Miami hasn't used today, which might have been good in that situation, which they used effectively last week, is a screen pass. Capshaw to kick it away. Perlo Bastine to receive. Oh, 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 terrible kick by Capshaw. That's just awful. And it's out at the Miami 37-yard line. That's a five-yard punt. Well, you brought up the point uh, last week against BC when Capshaw had a bad punt and shanked it. The punter's always trying to kick it from the short hash to the short side of the field. You know, I don't even care if it's down the middle of the field if you don't want to kick it to the wide side. But exactly, you, made you that kick point. this ball down the middle of the field against the wind. I don't even think you I can kick it out of the I don't understand why you're zone. going for the corner. Look where he's aiming. He's aiming for the corner from the short hash mark. Officially a one-yard punt. West Virginia at their 42. Give the Cobra. Cobra dragged down by Nate Webster, who held that to a gain of about two. Against the wind, John, you're kicking from the other team's 43 or 44-yard line. Just punt it up down the middle of the field. It's not going to go in the end zone against this wind. No, I was, I was just going to make that point. With this wind, you could kick it as far and as long as you want to, and I don't think it could reach the Miami Hurricane end zone. From the 45, 5 minutes, 34 seconds to go. Fake to Coburn. Bulger on the rollout. All kinds of time. Throwing back across, and the ball dropped by Burton, his tight end. West Virginia missing Anthony Beck, their starting tight end. Went out with the bad ankle in the third quarter. Well, in the heat of battle, Frank, sometimes you make bad decisions. That time, Bolger did hit his tight end right in the hands, Sean Burton, number 81. But all alone on the outside, he had Corey Ivey standing on the sidelines. And I think if I had my choices, I would take the tight end. All, all along, he was locked into the tight end. He never saw Corey Ivey to the outside standing by himself. Third and seven for West Virginia. Here comes the fade route on the outside that they scored on the first first play of the uh, passing play. Pass to Ivy complete. He's drilled shy of the first down. Let's see where they'll mark it. Leonard Myers made a great hit. He's about a yard and a half short of the first. Yeah, the same hand signal on the outside that they scored earlier to Jerry Porter down the Mountaineer sideline. They have a fade route with the inside receivers going to the outside. That time, Bolger electing to go to the inside receivers, same side of the field, but it looks like they're going to come up about a yard and a half short of the first down. And they are going to go for it. They don't want to give the ball back to Miami with four minutes, 52 seconds to play. West Virginia a little confused as to their formation. Mark Plants, the backup fullback, was looking at Bulger going, where am I supposed to be? <laughs> so West Virginia spends their second timeout. And Don Nealon's not happy about that. Well, I, I just go back to the punch on two very questionable special teams things today. One, the pooch kickoff, you know, with the win. And secondly, this is the second week in a row. Freddie Capshaw has tried for a coffin corner down where he has little room from the hash mark to a near coffin corner instead of just hanging the ball up and it's a tough catch in this win you want the guy to handle the ball you're not trying to knock it out of bounds with with this kind of win you want the guy to try and handle the ball it's almost a pooch punt that would be tough to handle you're right frank and you have the ball bounce you never know what can happen on your special teams but now you have your face with a fourth and one, West Virginia is West Virginia today. They're two of two on fourth down, and Miami uh, with 4:39 left to go in this football game. They have to do a good job here on fourth down because with all this wind that we said Capshaw was punting into, that wind is going to be at West Virginia's favor if they get this first down. Plenty of time still with one one timeout remaining to get in field goal range. You know they're only down by a point. A field goal would do it. I got some advice for Freddie Capshaw and the special teams coordinator Chuck Pagano. No more pooch kicks from the near hash mark to that side of the field. <laughs> Fourth down. West Virginia has to reach the 47. And flags fly, and I think West Virginia jumped. Well, let's see if this changes Don Nalen's thinking. Well, I think it will. They were in a too tight, pretty much a running formation or a play action. It appeared to be Terry Dixon, number 72, and they'll send the punt team onto the field. Not having a good day is big uh, Terry Dixon, number 72. You see him right there. Definitely had his hand down in a three-point stance and then brought it up, clinched a little bit, and 
He's about 0 for 3 the last time we've had ISOs on him. Miami in their punt safe formation as Fazawari will kick it away with the win. He too is aiming for that corner. Santana Moss will let it bounce and it goes into the end zone. Santana Moss not going to make the same mistake Antonio Brown made for West Virginia earlier. Canes will have it. First and 10 from their 20. 4.32 left to go. And John, it's imperative that Miami at least squeeze out a couple of first downs. Well, they have to use the clock here to their advantage. 4.32 left to go. West Virginia only has one timeout remaining. Two first downs would, would do the trick if they could just get them on the ground and grind it out a little bit. They've had some success running the football in the second half against West Virginia. As you see there, Kenny Kelly getting into the football game with some instructions by Rob Trzynski on the sidelines. And it's still Clinton Port. It's a tailback. We haven't seen James Jackson here in the fourth quarter. James playing on bad ankles, a bit of a sprained knee, injured his shoulder last week against Boston College, and appeared to his lower back took a hit today in this game. There you see the time and score. Gaines with the double tight end. Give to Portis. Portis with a nice crease. Portis will have a first down and picks up 14 yards before Barron Green can make the tackle for the West Virginia defense. Well, there's a nice cut by Clinton Portis. That's the cut we were talking about on the last possession that if he makes, he may go to the house. That time, great instinctive running by the freshman running back and a good job by the Miami offensive front. You see there a lot of white jerseys going backwards. Big number 62, Richard Mercier doing a nice job down the field, about five or six yards on his guy. Miami, a big first down with four, 12 and counting left to go in this football game. Rushing yards in each half. Miami has doubled their total from the first. Kane stay with the two tight ends. And they give to Portis. Portis will get a couple up across the 35 to the 36 yard line. Held it to a gain of two. Greg Robinette, number 99, on the tackle for West Virginia. That time, the backside pursuit doing a good job for the Mountaineer defensive front. They're crossing the face of Miami. Looked like they did a nice job controlling the line of scrimmage, but they have to go three plays and out if they want another chance to get this football back in decent field position. Hurricanes with a second and eight. Play clock's down to 11. Now standard personnel for Miami. Two wide receivers in the game. King in motion. Hit to Portis. Portis got through a hole up across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Number 11, Gary Tompkins making the tackle. That'll bring up a third and about two. UM having to ride the freshman here. As James Jackson apparently unable to go here in this fourth quarter. And Jared Payton in Chicago with his father. Yeah, a lot of pressure, pressure on the freshman running back, but he's responding. You see James Jackson, he did get his helmet back, so he's get, inching closer to getting back onto the football field. But right now, the freshman doing the, the majority of the work. Double tight end for Miami on third and three. And whistle stopped this one. West Virginia moved, and I think Robert Hall came out of his stance. Yeah, it looked like the left side of the Miami offensive line may have had a, a jump start on the, uh, on the snap count. Well, that's a critical penalty right there on Robert Hall, number 77, who's gone most of the way in the second half in place of Greg LaFair. Looked like Hall and the tight end yeah, actually both got off, went off at the same time, Frank. Now puts Miami in a little bit uh, tougher situation at third and eight to go. A lot easier before the illegal procedure there by Hall. Yeah, you like third and two and a half a lot more than third Love and eight. It. Still double tight end for Miami. Lost the only wide receiver. They to Portis. Kelly on the rollout. Has his man. Complete the pass. Inside West Virginia territory. Santana still going. Finally steps out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Huge completion. In fact, I thought Bubba Franks is ready to jump and try to catch that ball. Yeah, I think Kenny Kelly's just testing the vertical leaping ability of his wide receivers and tight ends. You saw Bubba Franks make a couple catches going up the ladder. This time Santana Moss doing a terrific job. Kenny Kelly getting outside again around Lake, the defensive end. And then look at that catch. He goes up and gets the football. He attacks the football. That's what you like about Santana Moss and the wide receivers for the Canes. So they watch Santana Moss. He goes up and says, hey, this is my football. We need this first down. Watch him go up and get the football. He doesn't let it come to him and beat him up. He goes and gets the football. First down, Hurricane. First down, Canes at the West Virginia 43. Culture in motion as Miami stays with that double tight end. 
Here's Portis, carefully picking his way through. Clinton Portis still going. Clinton Portis to the 20, to the 10, and Clinton Portis shut down at the one yard line. Clinton Portis with a 41 yard run. And Miami in business at the West Virginia one. Scooter Davis saved the touchdown for the time being. Just when he thought Clinton Portis was going to keep taking those little baby steps with two hands over the football, he breaks out of the pack. Clinton Portis did a nice job. Kenny Kelly eyeing that 25 second clock so he can milk it as long as he can. Watch Clinton Portis. He gets through the first wave, then he protects the football. He's bobbing and weaving. Now he goes into a full sprint. He says, I think I can get to the end zone. He does a nice job. Scooter Davis pushes the freshman running back out at the one foot line, but a nice job by Portis picking his way through. Would be tacklers, 16 rushes, 105 yards, and a 6.6 average. Look for him to go in. From the one. Portis, easy touchdown over the top. With a minute 49 to go, Clinton Portis puts the Hurricanes off 27 to 20. Well, give this Miami Hurricane team credit. They've only played one half of football two weeks in a row, and it's good enough to, looks like good enough to get two victories. Clinton Portis, the freshman, taking it out, taking it in from a yard out. Really, West Virginia laying down on that goal line, and Miami beat him down in the second half, doing a nice job offensively with that offensive line. Beating West Virginia to the punch. Miami 27, West Virginia 20. Andy Crossland in to attempt the extra point. There's a minute 49 to go. Crossland's extra point is good. And that is important because now it takes a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie this game. Clinton Portis, let's take one more look at this run and watch the block on the inside. I'm not sure who did it, but he collapsed number 43. Take a look at the line of scrimmage. It's a great job. Eric Schnuff, Mercier, 55, and Eric 56. Schnuff. Did a nice job in front. You see Ty Y still being active down the field. That's what you have to do. When you have good running backs, the offensive line and wide receivers have to say, stay alive because you never know when they're going to break them. And here, West Virginia just quits at the line of scrimmage. You see 43, uh, the, one of the linebackers, he doesn't even look like he wants to play anymore. Ryan Brady, the outside at rush end, he takes one block from the right side and just kind of gives up towards his hurdles. Back, yeah. Hurdles over for the touchdown. West I'll Virginia's you. beat. I'm sorry, John, I'll tell you what, on the play before, Eric Schnupp just buried him. He buried Brady. So we got to give props to Eric Schnupp, who, by the way, is a big rock fan. During the week, he did his uh, best rock imitation. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? And <laughs> he did the, you know, can you smell the whole deal? So uh, Eric Schnupp with a good job. And Clinton Portis, the freshman, it's his second 100-yard game of his young career. The first one kind of, uh, you know, went by the boards because they lost East Carolina. Hopefully, this 100-yard game is going to mean a lot more. Andy Crossland will kick it off. Sean Terry, Lewis Daniels back to receive for West Virginia. Don Nealon said some heartbreaking losses to the Hurricanes in the last couple of years, both at Morgantown. Of course, the uh, famous block punt by Tremaine Mack. And then last year when the Canes put together a last minute drive, that's a great kickoff against the win. This is Daniels from the goal line. Got away from Darrell Arlene, but will not reach the 20-yard line. And Javon Rhodes and Ken Dangerfield, number 50 and 47, making the tackle for the Hurricanes. So West Virginia will start basically at their 20-yard line. That, by the way, a great kick by Crossland against the win. Well, you're going to see what Miami's defensive secondary can do all day. The Miami front has not gotten to the quarterback for the for West Virginia, Mark Boulder. Now they're going to be in a, a hurry-up mode, hurry-up offense is West Virginia. Let's see if Miami can put up the pressure, turn the pressure up on Bolger in this Mountaineer pass attack. Mountaineers with four wide receivers. Miami in their dime defensive package with six defensive backs. Blitz coming from Popovich, throw to the outside, complete to Porter. He got away and Porter run out of bounds at the 35 yard line. And a flag down. That's 15. Too. Oh, now that's a terrible call. All he did was try to punch the ball out. That's a terrible call. I think they're calling him for tackling him out of bounds instead of maybe punching the football. It looked like he was on the tarp on the outside. Now we'll have to see that again to see if it was a legitimate call, but it was definitely a personal foul call at the end of that play. The play was over. Personal foul on the defense. 15 yards. Push down. That'll put it at midfield. Let's take one more look at Marquise Fitzgerald. Yeah, he should have let him go. He should have let go with the left hand. Yeah, that's a penalty. He should have let go with the left hand. First down at the 50.
Bulger out of the shotgun. Quick pass to Asagata, complete at the 44. Okay. Pick up of six. That's just a penalty, John, you can't take. You simply cannot take it. And there was a missed tackle on the route, which turned a seven-yard gain into a 15-yard gain. 122 left to go. Bulger again out of the shotgun. Quickly outside. Pass is caught by Asagata, and he took a huge hit. And now they're calling it incomplete, but he juggled the football. Leonard Myers just really blew him up. It almost looked like West Virginia was going to bait Leonard Myers on a hitch and go because Myers in a full sprint from about 12 yards up. He had huge cushion on the near side. Bolger just a quick step out of the shotgun, and then he just gets del uh, a delivered a punch. Myers did on the near sideline of West Virginia. Can't tell if he bobbles the football. Looks like the ball came out, and that was a good call by the, the official on the uh, West Virginia sideline. Third and four. Bolger in the shotgun with four wide receivers. Three-step drop, complete to Ivy, and then he dropped it. And again, Leonard Myers there for the hit. It's fourth down. One minute, nine seconds left to go. Miami dropping about eight personnel defenders in the in the secondary that time. It looked like one of the defensive linemen slash linebackers for Miami. Number 55, Jamal Green, was lined up on the inside. He drops back, so Miami rushing three. And dropping eight. They yeah, got three defensive linemen, two linebackers, and six defensive backs in the game. Four wideouts for West Virginia. Fourth and four. Bulger steps up, throws, complete, and Porter got away, and he's going to have a first down. Leonard Myers had him right at the first down marker, but he got away. And West Virginia has life at the Miami 38. Well, Porter's a big receiver, 6'3", 215. He's a senior now. Frank, remember, we mentioned he was a defensive back two and a half weeks ago. He's a big body. And you see the timeouts, West Virginia with one timeout remaining and 56 seconds in counting left to go in the game. Bulger, the end of the outside, a little too far for Asagata. It's that same kind of route they scored the touchdown on in the first quarter. Yeah, this time Miami, Al Blades taking the good angle on the defensive secondary. They should have a good angle. They have eight guys, at least eight guys in the secondary dropping, so Miami should be able to prevent the outside pass. 51 seconds to go, second and 10 from the Hurricane 38. Miami up 28 to 20. Four wideouts in for West Virginia, staying with the same personnel group. Bulger steps up in the pocket. Delivers over the middle and complete to Coburn at the 33. Bulger pass. And Bulger was nearly Coburn. past the line of scrimmage when he got rid of that ball. I think he just was about a half a yard behind it. He almost was going to take off with the football, and I think he realized he might not make the first down, so the clock would continue to run. So he tried to throw the football to Coburn coming on a delay route underneath just to check down, and he kind of threw it behind him and a little too hard. Third and 10, West Virginia at the Miami 38. Still with the four wideouts. Bulger out of the shotgun. Over the middle. Pass is caught. That's an excellent catch That's by a first Sean down. Terry. And it is a first down as Popovich was in good position, but Terry snatched the ball away from him. That's putting the ball in the perfect position. Mark Bulger, very accurate passer, does a nice job of throwing it over the middle. He's controlling the linebackers with his eyes, waiting for his receivers to get in those holes, those zones in the middle of the Miami defense. That's just a good throw and a good catch. Miami couldn't do anything about that. They were in the right, perfect position to defend the pass. They're going to measure for a first down, although it appears from our angle that he has it. Yeah, it looked like he had it by at least the length of the football, Frank. And Miami has chosen to sit back in their zone and not put a lot of pressure on Bulger. And I know it's risky, but you let this kid stand back there, and he can pick you apart. Although the Hurricanes do have three interceptions today on Bulger. They'd love to make it four from the 28. Give to Coburn. Coburn to the 24. Webster and Morgan to tackle. Gain was only four. And that's going to run some more time. They're down to 27, 26 seconds. Well, they have to either spike the football or call a timeout. Looks like they're going to spike it. They do spike it, and that stops the clock with 20 ticks left. It'll be a second and six from the Miami 24-yard line. So this one going right down to the wire. 
Miami 28, West Virginia 20. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you on Sports Channel. Miami trailed this game 13 to nothing at halftime. And just like last week at Boston College, appeared to have no emotion or nothing going for them. But they've responded in the second half. Let's see if they can hold off West Virginia. Bulger, bad snap. Bulger forced to run around, throws to the outside, caught by Porter at the 20-yard line. He's down two yards shy of a first down. And West Virginia uses a timeout with 12 seconds left. Well, West Virginia very lucky. Looked like the quarterback, Mark Bolger, wasn't ready for the for the snap from the center from John Conte. And actually did a great job of locating the football and finding a wide receiver. Found Jerry Porter on the near side. But clearly, Bolger looking to the right side, looking at the defense. He wasn't ready for the ball. Scoops up the ball. Runs almost into the Miami defensive uh, pass rush and then actually completes the pass out to Porter. A heads-up play by the senior quarterback. A nice throw. They had to burn a timeout because of the miscommunication between Conti and Bolger, but they made a positive play. It could have been disaster for the Mountaineers. 12 seconds left. It's fourth and about two and a half yards. West Virginia's got to get down to between the 18 and 17-yard line, and the Mountaineers are out of timeouts. Now, they can't stop the clock if they get a first down. Well, even if they get this first down, Frank, they have to, the ball, the clock will stop to set the chains. They have to get on the line of scrimmage and run another play. So that's what the offensive staff for West Virginia talking about. Miami trying to talk about if they do get a first down, take your time defensively up front getting to the line of scrimmage, but get into the defensive set, get in your place that you're supposed to be, get with the coverage you want to be in because Bolger can hurt you and they're only going to take one pass play. They probably have time for just two more offensive plays if they make a first down. Fourth and two at the Miami 20. Still four wideouts in for West Virginia. Terry in motion. Bolger on the dash. Throw into the end zone, and that ball is intercepted at the one-yard line. Leonard Myers with his second pick of the day, and the fourth for the Miami Hurricanes. And this one is going to be in the books with a Miami victory at 28 to 20. Well, Miami did it with defense and offense. They came together in the second half. A nice job of the defense there. Myers coming up with the interception. A great defensive stand down at the end of the game. I'm sorry, it was Marquise Fitzgerald, number 27, not 22, who made the pick. Let's take another look at the interception, and that is the first of Marquise Fitzgerald's career. They wanted to go to the flat, West Virginia did. They're actually sprinting to the outside, but I don't know why Bolger decided to throw the football up in the air. I guess it was good coverage underneath by Dan Morgan on Terry, and it looked like Marquise Fitzgerald gets the football. It's a jump ball at the goal line. Marquise Fitzgerald wins the battle. Bolger ends up not coming through in the clutch for West Virginia, and it's a defeat for the Mountaineers. Kenny Kelly. We'll just take it on a quarterback sneak, get a couple of yards, and that'll do it. Three, two, one, and Miami has pulled out another one, trailing 13 0 at halftime. The Hurricanes come back and beat the West Virginia Mountaineers by a score of 28 to 20. Don Nalen walks across to shake Butch Davis's hands. And the Hurricanes, John, for the second week in a row, pull one out of the fire. Well, they play 30 minutes of football. Our graphic couldn't have said it better. They come out in the second half and total yards. I'm not sure what it was, but it was well over 200 yards of offense for Miami. The defense comes out and does a great job. Well over 300 yards of offense for the University of Miami in the second half. They do a great job holding the Mountaineers to only one score in the second half. And you can't say enough about the determination Miami showed in that second half, Frank, they came out with a different attitude and came out with a victory. A look at one of the heroes, Clinton Portis. We'll be back to wrap it up from the Orange Bowl. Your final score once again, the Hurricanes 28, West Virginia 20. Oh, business is crazy, but Office Depot makes sense. Buy Chevrolet trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. By Heineken, brewed the same way since 1886. And by Bell South, with crystal clear wireless phone service at a great price. Back at the Orange Bowl, where the Miami Hurricanes have defeated the Mountaineers of West Virginia by a final of 28 to 20. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you. And John, I can just hear Steven Tyler and Aerosmith, the strains of living on the edge, because that's what the Hurricanes are doing. Second week in a row, coming back from a halftime deficit, a significant halftime deficit, and winning the game 28 to 20. The Hurricanes are way out on the edge, Frank. Uh, they played 30 minutes of football last week, and it was good enough for a victory today. They played 
30 minutes of football in the second half again, and it's good enough for an eight-point victory against the Mountaineers of West Virginia. You have to credit the defense. They did a great job coming three plays and out on the first series of the third quarter, and the offense answered the bell. The freshman Portis uh, running wild in the fourth quarter, doing a nice job of converting from one yard out. But, uh, hey, it's a, it's a team effort, and you have to credit Butch Davis and the coaching staff. They found a way to win for the second week in a row. Let's pick it up with Miami trailing 20-14, to 14 and Clinton Portis in the game for James Jackson, who's been playing banged up. And Portis, the freshman, 17 carries, 106 yards. This 41-yard run, great blocking from Robert Hall, Eric Schnupp, Ty Wise, Richard Mercier and Joaquin Gonzalez, and this set up the Hurricanes for what turned out to be the clinching touchdown. Well, it was a great patient run. You know, a lot of white jerseys going backwards, and Clinton Portis just picking and bobbing and weaving to the inside of those big bodies, and it all set up the touchdown from one yard out uh, for Miami to go uh, to the 28-20 lead, and then you see Bolger on fourth down and about a yard and a half to go, just throws it up for grabs in the Miami end zone, and it comes down Marquise Fitzgerald, number 27, at the goal line, uh, the last turnover of the Miami defense. They do a great job of keeping West Virginia out of the end zone when it counted most. West Virginia held to 85 yards on the ground. Miami 167. Good passing yardage for Bulger, but he threw four interceptions to the Miami defense. Miami D coming up with five turnovers in all. Look at the yardage in the second half, John. 314 for Miami. Kenny Kelly playing on that bad left ankle. An outstanding second half. Well, in the Big East Conference, you know, Miami should be able to do this to teams. If they put two halves together, they're going to be able to win football games. They cannot do this against Virginia Tech, though. They're going to have to learn to play 60 minutes of football and air-free football if they're going to have, have a chance to win the Big East Conference. Now, officially, Kelly, 21 of 33, 266 with two touchdowns and one interception. Thanks for joining us here at the Orange Bowl. Catch more University of Miami football on Sports Channel next Saturday, November 6th at 11.30 p.m. when the Hurricanes battle the Pittsburgh Panthers in a Big East game. Football fans, don't miss Sports Channel's Sunday morning playbook. It's kickoff at 8.30 with the Dolphin Magazine, followed by the Tom Coughlin Show at 9 and the Jimmy Johnson Show at 9.30. Then at 10, it's an hour and a half of in-depth NFL pregame coverage on Sunday morning NFL. That's all right here on Sports Channel. For my broadcast partner and future member of the PGA Senior Tour, John Congemi, I'm Frank Fort saying goodbye and the final score once again, Miami Hurricanes 28, West Virginia 20. So long, everyone.